Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. Today, I'm going to attempt to build a very simple recipe website using Node.js and MongoDB. Now, let me show you the project. So today, we're going to be building this layout using Bootstrap. I'm going to show you how to render different pages, a simple search bar. We're going to look at how to do different queries such as the latest recipes, show random recipes. We're going to have different categories and different recipes. Of course, the recipes will have detailed views. So if I click on this one, this will come up with the detailed view. If we search for something, that would also work and so on. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is the publish your recipe bit, which is we're going to build a very simple form that will allow you to submit a recipe with a basic image. And that recipe will be shown on the front, depending on which category you choose. And that's pretty much it. And there is a lot of things that I could have done, but I tried to keep it quite simple. If this is something that you would like to build, stick around, consider liking the video, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and comment below for the algorithm. Hello and welcome everybody. And let's get started with this video. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new project folder. I'm going to call this a cooking block. And let's enter the folder and let's initialize a new project. I am using Windows so I can do left shift, right click, open PowerShell window here. And this is basically going to CD to my project folder. But if you're Mac or Linux, all you have to do is use the CD command and the folder that you want to enter. Or if you want to go backwards, you put two dots and so on. Anyways, to initialize a new project, we need to do npm in it and I'm going to put the dash y flag which will skip all the questions. So it's going to set everything to the full such as the name, the version, description and so on. And the first thing that I want to do now is install all of the dependencies that we need for this project. So let's start by doing npm. I is short for install and then we can list all the dependencies that we need. So we're going to start with connect flash. Then we're going to have the cookie parser. We're going to have, we're going to have dot env. We're going to have ejs. We're going to have express, uh, express ejs layout, express file upload, express sessions, and MongoDB. And the last one is Mongoose. So don't worry, I will be explaining every single uh, dependency that we're going to be using as we go along. This should take a couple of seconds. Okay, um, now we're done. We can open our project in our favorite code editor and I can just do code dot and this should open the project in Visual Studio Code. For me, here it is. And as you can see, the project is open here on the left side. I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And also if you're using another code editor or even Visual Studio Code, you can just go to file and just open your project folder from here as well. Now that we have everything inside here, if we click on package.json, you will see everything that we just created, the dependencies here. And we also want to add node one. So Every time we make a change to a project, we don't want to stop the server and restart it manually. So let's do that. Let's go back to the PowerShell in my case and let's do npm install node one and then dash dash save dash dev as this is a development dependency. This should take a second. And if we go back to package.json, you will see that the dependency has been installed here. And note that the versions of all those dependencies might change in future. They probably will do. And so things might be slightly different if you're watching this video in future. Just have that in mind. You're just going to have to Google your, the errors that you're getting and so on. Anyways, if you want our project to run with Nodmon, we need to go under scripts here and add a new line. So I'm going to do comma and the line will be start column. And then inside here, we want to start our application with Nodmon and then our application file will be called app.js, which we are going to create now. So let's save this and we're pretty much done with this file so we can close it and we can start by creating our app.js file. So inside here, I can just create a new file called app.js 
And this is going to be kind of like the brain of our application. So we're going to include all of the dependencies here and like middleware, and we're going to create an express server. To do this, let's start by including only the dependencies that we need now. What I'm going to try to do is add the dependencies as when we need them, so it makes a lot more sense. So everything will be hopefully sectioned in this video, so you can skip to it and hopefully it will just work. Let's try that. So first of all, we need to require express. So we're going to do const express equals require, and then we require express like so. Then we need the express layouts, const express layouts equals require, and then we require express EJS layouts like so. And the layout will be basically very helpful when we create our template for our website. We, we will be using Bootstrap, but what this allows us to do is create different layouts for different scenarios so we don't have a duplicated code. I will show you in a second how this works. And now we need to initialize a new Express application. To do this, we can do const app equals Express. Close this. We need to set a port number, const port equals we can set an environment port number as well if you wish to if you wish to upload this project somewhere so you might want to do this process dot env and then port number but because we are working on localhost i'm just gonna set one manually so we're gonna do all port 3000 like so we need to also require dot env this is going to be for storing or database details so we might as well do that now uh to require dot env it's a little bit different i have made a full-on video on this if you want to check it out it will be in the description below if i remember to add it and let's put dot env it's definitely in my Node.js playlist if you want to check it out. And then we need to do config like so. Now we need to add a couple of middlewares here. And the first one is the express URL encoded. And this will basically allow us to pass URL encoded bodies. So let's do that super quickly. We can do app.use and then express dot URL encoded. And inside here, we just need to pass one option. And that option is called extended and then true like this and close then we need to set up a static folder and i will and i will explain so app dot use express dot static and or static folder i'm just going to call public now what this is going to do is every time we require something to our html such as images uh, scripts, style sheet, or whatever. We don't want to kind of like go, like we don't want to list the full path. We just want to put, for example, slash image, slash images folder and slash image.jpg. That would be a lot better than listing the whole folder. And that's why we're creating this public folder, which we'll create in a second as well, as soon as we finish this. We also need another middleware, which is for the um, express layout. So let's do use express layouts and for the layouts we need to set a main folder so we're going to do app dot set and this will be layout it's going to make a lot of sense in a second so the layout folder that i'm going to use is going to be called dot layouts and then main all right this is where we're going to store our layout and our main layout is going to be just called main then we're going to have to create some route and we might as well start uh, building our folders and everything. So let's do const route and equals require. And we need to require our route, which we haven't yet created. So this will be server slash, slash route. And then uh, let's call it recipe, recipe routes.js. And we want our app to use those routes. So we're going to do app.use and then slash and then route like so that's all good and the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that our app is listening on this port number so let's do app dot listen and then port number we need to pass the port number from here which is going to be the port 3000 
and then we can do another function inside here and just console log something and I'm going to console log with the backticks, single backticks, I'm going to console log listening to to port and with the dollar sign curly bracket open and close we can pass the port number from here. Okay this is all good. Now application won't work just yet. I'm thinking let's create all the files that we need. So let's start with the public folder. So so public folder as I said we are setting it here and our public folder is gonna have a couple of things. It's gonna hold our styles. So CSS it's going to hold or images. I'm going to shorten this to IMG and it's going to hold or front end JavaScript and potentially will probably hold the uploads as well. Uploads here and that's it. We'll create the files in a second. The next thing that we probably want to do is our server folder, which will have, let's have a look. This will have a server folder and inside this server folder, we're going to have controllers. Controllers is where we're going to do all the queries and control the, the functionalities of every single page. Models. Models are going to be the way we structure our database. Um, it will make sense in a second as well. And lastly, in here, we're going to have routes, which we're going to have to create very shortly. And also let's create our views folder now. So the views folder is going to be where we store all of our HTML pretty much. Obviously in this case we're using EJS, but this is where we're going to store all of our EJS files. So all of our pages. And as I said earlier, we're going to have one main layout, which is going to be in this layouts folder, and then it's going to use main.ejs. So let's create that. So I'm going to create a new folder inside here called layouts. And inside this folder, we're going to create the file called main js okay cool so let's do so this is all good save it save it let's do a very simple route just to test whether this is working in order to do this let's go to route let's create our first route which is recipe route so recipe routes.js and inside here we're gonna have to include express again so we can use the router const express and then we require express like so and then we do const router and then this will be equals express dot router like so okay we should be able to now use the router and we also want to bring the controllers which i'm gonna create now uh in fact let's create it now so i'm gonna create a new file called recipe controller like so, and this is going to be a JS file. Save this, go back to the recipe route and let's include that file, const recipe controller equals require, and then we require the recipe controller, which will be backwards ones, controllers slash recipe controller, like so. We don't have to specify .js in here and we can just close. And now in order to be able to use the routes, we're going to actually have to export this. So we're going to have to do module dot export and we export the router. Okay. At this point, we should be able to create a very simple router and we might as well make a comment in here. So let's do slash and two asterisks. And inside here, I'm going to say app route. So this is where we're going to list all of our pages and they're going to be linked to the recipe controller. So let's uh, create one just to test the application. I'm going to use router. And then the first one is going to be get. So get, and then we just want to get the home page like so, just slash, and that would be. It. And now we need to use the controller. So recipe controller, and let's name the first one homepage. This is just so the description is makes sense. So let's do homepage, homepage like so, and close. Obviously we need to create this controller now, so we can close this, close app.js as well. 
and we can jump into recipe controller which is in server controllers recipe controller and we can create our first route and test the page now to do this let's make a little comment in here so slash and just so we start well so let's do this is going to be a get page and it's going to get slash so this is going to be a home page and on the second line let's just say what page are we getting and this is going to be the home page home page like so and that's it so in order to use this we're going to have to do export dot and then home page home page is what we just created in the uh, recipe router and this is going to be an asynchronous function and then we're going to have require uh, sorry request and response and then this is going to be a narrow function like so and inside here is where our logic is going to go for every single page obviously we're going to have different uh, controllers so just to test this let's render the home page which we haven't yet created so let's do that so let's do res.render and we want to render the index page now we haven't yet created this but i'm going to show you how this works in a second and actually that's it so first of all we want to render the index page which we haven't yet created so let's go into views and make sure that the main.js is actually called main.ejs because we're using ejs my fault and let's put this into layouts this is going to be our main layout actually it is already there and inside views i'm going to create our first page which is our index page or home page you can call it whatever you like i'm going to keep as index.ejs and this is going to be our home page and this is going to be our main layout now let me show you how this works so first of all in main.ejs we're going to have to create like a global layout so let's do a quick html i'm going to show you how this works so this is a very basic html and we want to put everything else this is going to be a layout that we're going to reuse and we want to put all the other pages to be using this layout so in order to do this we can use ejs so we're going to do uh, start ejs like so dash and then body and then dash and close ejs like so and hopefully uh, if we put something in the index page now let's put uh, h1 of hello world and save All right everything is looking good uh, save everything and let's have a look at what we get now first of all we need to actually start the application and let's hope that we've done everything correctly so it's going to be npm start and press enter if you see node mon uh, starting node mon uh, with green and listening on port 3000 that's all good and now if you open the browser okay and we're getting an error error no default engine was specified and and this is because i actually forgot to specify the view engine so if you go back to so if you go back to app.js we can just specify the view engine inside here we can just do app.set and then view engine like so and the view engine that we're using is ejs and we're done all right let's save this restart the server if you have to as you can see it's restarted uh, automatically and now if we go to the browser and we put localhost with 3000 you will see that we're getting hello world now the interesting bit is that if i was to inspect the code i'm going to do control and new and if I was to inspect the code, you will see that it's using the main template. So this is coming from the main template and this is the actual home page, which is really good. So we'll be able to include all of our style sheets in here, uh, JavaScript stuff, and just, and it will make creating pages very easy for us and it will be very easy to maintain. Uh, right. Let's close this and let's go back. So that's all good let's close this let's start building our main template all right so we're going to be using a lot of bootstrap in here and i'm thinking let's start from top to bottom and we'll work our way in so first of all let's have a look at the title now what we want to do is potentially we want to have uh, because we're using a template and this is going to be reused on every single page we don't want the title to be the same so we either want to pass title from our controller 
or we want to have a default one. And in order to do this, let me make some space a little bit and I'll tidy it up in a second. So inside here, what we can do is we can do a little bit of EJS. So let's start EJS like so and close it like so. And inside here we can do, uh, and that needs to be equal by the way. And inside here we can do type of title. Title is the object that we want to pass, not equal uh, undefined. So if the title is not undefined, we want to pass the, we want to grab what the title is, but if it is undefined, if we don't have one, we want to set a default one. So I'm going to put title to be with column to be equal something like cooking blog dash made with node.js, something like this. And hopefully now, if I was to tidy this up a little bit, Hopefully now we won't get any errors or anything like that. And if I was to refresh this, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but if I was to refresh this, it says cooking block made with Node.js. Let me uh, zoom in. And But if we wanted to pass a, a custom one, so what we have to do is we have to go back to a controller and where the rest render is, we can actually pass objects from here. So for example, I could do something like inside curly brackets, comma, and then curly brackets is where we pass all objects. So I could do something like title and then just provide a title from here. Let's just say home page for now. So let's have a look. So it's not going to use the default now anymore. If I refresh, it's going to say home page. And this is how we pass the title. And then if I refresh this, you'll see that it says home page. So let me change this to something like Um, okay, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Obviously, make sure that your is a little bit more SEO friendly, I guess. But that's just an example. I removed the taskbar so we have a little bit more space. And now that we have the title out of the way, let's have a look at uh, setting up Bootstrap. So we're done with the title, and inside here we want to include Bootstrap. So let's go to the Bootstrap website. So if we search for Bootstrap, uh, the first one here. At the moment, we are currently in version 5.1.1. I'm not going to do anything crazy with Bootstrap. I'm just going to use it to quickly uh, bootstrap the layout. So if we click Get Started, I'm going to use the CDN from here. So I'm going to copy this and go back and paste this into here, into the header, into the head of our website here. I also might want to grab the icons, but before we do this, let me quickly grab the JS just in case somebody needs it. I'm just going to do the bundle one. So this needs to be put at the bottom. So let's copy this and let's work it here at the bottom. And that would do. And then I want the icons. So for the icons, let's have a look. For the icons, I think we have to go under icons and then, where is it? Learn more about Bootstrap icons. Let's click on that. Uh, you can npm install it, but I'm just going to use it from a CDN. So let's have a look, install. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, this is what I want. So there are two ways of doing it. We can either use the link or we can import it into a star sheet. I'm going to use the link for now. So let's copy this, paste it inside here. I also want to grab a font. So I'm going to go to Google Fonts quickly and let's find the font uh, Rubik. And this is the one that I want. So I'm going to click on it and I only want the 3000. So this one here, select. And I want potentially the 5000. So let's select that. And there are two ways of including this as well. Uh, with a link, or you can import it into straight into your style sheet. I'm going to do the link for now. So let's copy this and paste it inside here. And the last thing that I'm going to do here in the head is include my own style sheet because I will do like a very little CSS just to make the layout a little bit better. So to do this, we can do a link. And then we can just link style sheet. So link rel style sheet href. And then we can put slash 
uh, CSS, I think it is, and then styles. I'm going to put styles with s.css. Then we need to create this file. And this is what I was think, talking about earlier with the public. If you do app.js, this is where we set our public folder, uh, static folder, sorry, which is public. And that's why I'm able to just go straight away into the public folder by doing slash CSS. So CSS, and then we just need to create this file. So I'm going to do styles.css and save. All right. In order to test this, we can definitely do something like a background color, sorry, body. And then let's do a background color of, I don't know, black and save. So if we saved all this, hopefully we should be able to see the changes. Uh, if we go back, refresh, as you can see, the background font is now black. And you, you might have noticed that the font has changed. It's coming from Bootstrap and that's why it's slightly different. Okay, this is pretty good so far. We can now start working on our layout. So if you go back and let's remove the style here, we won't need this for now and we don't need this for now. So all we have to concentrate is on our main.ejs file here and let's build it up. So hopefully it won't be too much. Let's start. First of all, I want to have my website center line. So I'm going to wrap everything in a container. So let's start with creating a div with the class name of container XXL. I think this is the big container that you can use from Bootstrap. We're going to have padding on the X axis, middle, and then five background. I'm going to set to white and I'm going to put shadow to large. Okay, that's all good. So this is our container. Everything is going to be going inside this container. And so I can add the body in here, but the body I want to wrap inside a main tag. So I can do main. This is an HTML5 tag and I'm going to wrap it like so. I think this is going to be good. And also I'm going to need some sort of a header and a footer. So what I actually originally, what I've done is actually search for bootstrap uh, five templates. And if you click on this link here, which is getbootstrap.com docs uh, 5.0 examples, uh, you will see a lot of examples in here. So what I've done originally is I actually copied one of them. I think it was maybe this one and I modified it a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to do that to save a little bit of time, I mean, to be fair, this one looks pretty nice actually, uh, but I'll just leave, I'll just build my own one. But if you wanted to do that, you can literally inspect this, copy the code from here. So you'd probably just do right click, edit HTML and just control and A to grab everything, copy it and paste it inside here. So if I was to paste it just to show you, then let's have a look. Then you'll see, oops, it's a little bit zoomed in. But you'll see that everything is in a container and we have our header here with uh, our homepage just says hello world. But as you can see, this is working. I'm going to build my own one just because uh, I want it slightly different, but uh, it, should, it shouldn't take too long. So first of all, I'm going to need to include my images, by the way. So let's go to the images folder and reveal in File Explorer. At the moment, it's empty. So let me grab some, some of the images that's going to include my logo um, and so on. All right. So let me tell you what's happening. So in here, I'm including my logo. I have created a background color. I have a hero image and another image with the publishing recipe section. And these are just for the categories. So just so we have something to use, that's all. So what I'm going to do is start building the header now. Let me close this, close, close, and let's build the header. I don't really want to over explain every single class name because there is a lot of them, but I'll try. Maybe I can do it initially and then I can speed up the process for not explaining any, everything else because I don't want this to turn into a bootstrap tutorial. So this is going to be a header and that's going to have a lot of class names. We're going to start with the flex because we want this to be a flex container, flex wrap, wrap align items center, justify 
content center content middle point between padding to the y axis of three uh, margin bottom of four border bottom we want and then inside here i'm gonna add the first one which is gonna be a link and that's gonna be my logo so i'm gonna do a href then i'm gonna put slash because i want my logo when we click on the logo i want it to go to the home page and then i'm gonna put a class name oops class name is equals and then this is gonna be d flex and then align item center that's correct and then call md3 margin bottom to margin bottom middle screen of zero text dark and text decoration none because i don't want the, the link to be underlined and inside here i'm going to use my image so i'm going to do image and then source the source will be slash images slash logo and that's an svg file and then i'm going to put a width of 229 which i already know as i was saving the svg and that's the height is 68 that's sometimes important so your images don't blink and alt i'm going to put something like cooking blog made with node.js and close this okay this is our logo done and now i'm going to create the menu inside here so this is going to be an ordered list this unordered list is going to have a lot of classes so it's going to be a nav with a call of 12 call middle auto uh, margin bottom two justify content center and then margin bottom margin sorry middle of zero and then inside here obviously we're going to have all links they're going to be inside a list so let's create a link href and this one i don't know these are just for show to be honest uh, but this one is going to be let's say the home one and i'm going to have a class name of nav link padding to the x y x axis of two and then link secondary like so secondary color and then this is going to be the home maybe let's did i close the link yeah okay hopefully now we should be able to just duplicate this a couple of times so let's have home about submit and contact home about submit and I probably won't even end up uh, making all those pages there just for sure to be honest but you will see how to make pages it will be very easy so let's just link them anyway so about and then this will be submit recipe submit recipe and this could be contact like so and the last thing that i want to do is add a search bar it's not going to be pretty i'm not going to add a button i'm just going to do it one of them that when you press enter it submits but you can add a button if you wish to it's totally up to you so we're going to do a div with the class name of call dash middle dash three and then text dash end and inside here we're going to create our form so this form is going to be it's going to have an action of search so we want when we submit this form to go to search but don't worry i'll come back to this when we build the search as well and then the method is quite important method let's put it as post because we want to post data to the search page but yeah as i said i'll come back to this and we just want an input here so i'm going to do input with the type of search and then this is going to have a name and the name is quite important this is how we're going to pass the data so i'm going to just make it very uh, kind of like obvious search term and then let's put a class name of form control and then placeholder is going to be equals search dot 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 and then area area label label is going to be equals search for accessibility and that's it okay i think this is good here we have the header we'll test it in a second i'm gonna do a very basic footer as well so inside here let's do a footer and for the footer i'm just gonna do a paragraph and i'm gonna say build by ruddy which is myself and let's just put a little bit of uh, padding so class padding y 
the the y-axis of five so this is up and down and i think i'm pretty happy with this as long as it works of course uh yeah it's all looking quite nice and hopefully we won't have to mess with this page much more so if we save this go back to our website let's refresh it and let's have a look we're getting the logo we're getting the menu here and a search bar without the button. We just press enter on this. Now, the first thing that I noticed is that the container here, it's a little bit small for my liking. So I definitely want to reset that and I want to make this a little bit better looking. So I'm going to add a background to this and yeah, customize ever so slightly. So let's do that super quickly. So I'm going to go to my public folder, CSS style.css and let's write a few styles and we'll come back to this as well when we add more. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we want to change the font to the one that we added from Google. I believe it's called Rubik. Uh, yeah, here it is, Rubik. So we want to add that. And in order to do that, I'm going to reset the bootstrap one. So to do this, we can do column root and then we can do the bootstrap font sans serif. And then this is going to be set to Rubik and Rubik is this? Yep. Rubik. And then this is going to be sans serif. Like so. Hopefully this should reset the font now. If I refresh, this should change. Here we go. The fonts have changed. The topography has changed, which is good. Now I want to make the container a little bit larger than this. It looks pretty small. So I'm going to do container dash XXL and I'm just going to reset the max width to this. So I'm going to do max width of 1530 pixels. Save this, go back, refresh. And as you can see, we have a bigger layout now, which I think that it looks a little bit better. It's still going to be fully responsive and everything. So don't worry. And let's add a little bit of flair to a website. So I'm going to do a body and I'm going to do a background image of URL. And then inside here, whoops. Inside here with double quotes, we can do image and then slash I like food.svg. I downloaded this SVG from somewhere and slightly modified it to make it look nice, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely link everything in my blog post or in the description below. And then as I need to give credit, obviously to the author of the image and then the background color, I'm going to change. I'm going to change to something like RGB. Oops. I definitely don't want this. No, I don't want this. Okay. The RGB. Damn it. Damn it. The RGB is going to be 243, 243, 243, 243. Okay. This is a very grayish color as you can see here. And then let's have a look at what we get. Refresh. We get this really nice background color, which is pretty cool. And one thing that I would want to do is reset all the links. We won't be able to see them now, but the bootstrap links are usually blue. So I'm just going to do that now. Just reset them. I don't want them to be blue. So I'm going to hack this super quickly. Color, it's going to be set to var. And then this is going to be BS dark, I believe. Yep. And that's absolutely fine. We're not getting any errors. It's all good. If I do. Okay. That's pretty good for our main layout. And now we can actually start building our homepage where it says hello world. Okay, let's start building the homepage now. And in order to do this, let me close everything by the way. I'm going to open the style. I'm going to have the stylesheet.css open just because we'll probably end up uh, writing a few styles, but uh, we are now pretty much done with the main layout. So let's close that as well. And let's jump into our homepage, which is in views index.ejs. So inside here, we're going to have to build a few things. Let's make it pretty first of all, and then we can populate it with data and so on. Let's start by building like kind of like the hero image and I've already prepared the, an image for this and I'm going to show you how I've done it as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a div with a class name of row. So a new row and inside here I'm going to do flex large row reverse align items center uh, gap 5 padding y uh, four and margin bottom or four inside here we're gonna have another column so this is gonna be a div with the class name of co 
dash 12 and call dash large six so on mobile we want the column to be full width well, to take 12 columns and on large screens i want it to be taking half of the space so six columns and then inside here is where we can add our hero image so let's do an image with the source and the source will be image and then hero dash image image dot png and then this is going to have a width let me close this so okay this is going to have a width of 607 a height of 510 uh, what else do we need a class name of the block mx la uh, lg auto image fluid to make it responsive and uh, maybe we can put loading lazy as well on it of course we'll probably need an old text as well so cooking with no js will do for now and then we need another column so let's do another div with the class name of cold-12 and this is going to be the same as above large six six excuse me and inside here is where we're going to have all hero text so i'm going to do an h1 here and i'm going to say let's say class name display dash five uh, font weight bold and then margin bottom three and for this i'm gonna put huge selection of delicious recipe ideas ideas like so and then i'm gonna add a little bit of text as well so let me tidy this up the text will be in a paragraph and I'm actually going to copy this because it's quite long but first of all let's put a class name of lead and you can pause the video if you wish to copy it but of course you'll probably have your own one I assume so this is going to be explore or huge selection of delicious recipe ideas including easy des uh, desserts delicious vegan and vegetarian dinner ideas gorgeous pasta recipes quick bakes family friendly meals and gluten-free recipes uh, that's pretty cool we also want two buttons underneath this so i'm gonna create another div inside here so div with the class name of uh now d grid display grid gap to the md flex and then justify md start like so and uh, this is gonna hold all two buttons so a href they're gonna be links so href this one is gonna be maybe like explore latest recipes explore latest and this is gonna have a class name of btn btn primary btn dark btn large and then um padding on the x uh, axis of four and me the md2 all right that's so long explore latest and now i can actually copy this one and just modify it this one is gonna be maybe we can do a random recipe from the database random recipe btn btm outline instead i think and then this, this is gonna be secondary and then uh btn large and yeah that can stay the same and we just need to change this into show random okay let's have a look at how this looks like first of all so let's refresh and as you can see it's looking all right if you want me to show you how i've done this i actually use the blob maker website so if you go to blobmaker.app uh, this app application this website creates different blobs so i just kind of like generated one that i liked and then i put this blob into photoshop and just masked it with an image from unsplash.com that will be linked will be credited in the description as well and then i kind of like turn the blob around and just paint it with different colors i can probably show you in photoshop in a second here it is uh, so that's how i've done it uh, here is the image it's masked as you can see so and we have two more blobs uh, on the outside and i'm not so sure whether i'm gonna include these files yet but yeah i might include them on my blog so you can download them and insert your own image and i've done the other image exactly the same here i've put three blobs and just masked a few images from unsplash.com 
And I think that it turned out all right, to be fair, and just exported it as a PNG. The next section would be the categories. For now, let's make sure that our layout is working nicely. And then we're going to obviously populate it with real data from a database. So let's do that next. And, and that's going to be a totally different section. So I'm thinking, let's do it here underneath. And I'm going to comment this just so it's a little bit clear. And this is going to be the categories. Category start. Let's create another one. Categories end. OK, inside here, we're going to create a div with the class name of row, row calls to row calls dash large six and then g2 g large 3 and p y 4 i'm not going to be over explaining the class names anymore as i've already probably explained most of them and then inside here is where we're going to have the categories as links so inside here we're just going to create a couple of links so let's start with a href and this potentially and we'll have to set up the link later for this. So let's leave it like that and let's put a few classes, call, text, center, and then category, which is a custom one, underscore, underscore, link is going to be a custom class that we're going to create. Uh, usually you could have a category as your main class in here, but I'll probably want to use it. So I'm just going to do category link like that. Uh, close it. And inside here, we're going to have an image and a title. For the image, because we want to kind of like uh, mask it, kind of like have it as object fit. So it always fit, fits the card. Uh, I'm going to do a div with the class name of category underscore underscore image oops underscore 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 image and then shadow like so and inside here is where our image is going to be so let's do image with the source of image and then we can put a category image for now let's grab one let's go to images and let's, let's just grab the first one here so american food let's do that let's close it so we have American food with the old tag of food. Let's do that. Let's have a lazy loaded. Lazy, potentially. I'm not going to put width and height on this one, uh, but because we're going to have it as object fit, uh, we'll see how this works. And then the last thing I want to do is kind of like add a title for each card. So I'm going to do a div with the class of pt-1. Now I'm actually wondering whether this uh, and I'm just going to put American food. And now I'm wondering whether this needs to be kind of like H2 or something, but it's inside the link. So let's leave it as it is. OK, so this is going to be our card and we're going to have, I think, five of them, maybe. So maybe we can just uh, duplicate this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's have a look how this looks like. OK. Uh, obviously it looks ugly at the moment, but uh, we can style this now. All right, we can use the category image and the, where is the other one? And the category link to style this. So if you go back to styles, let's have a look at how we can do that. First of all, let's start with the category. Let's, let's do a little comment. Category card, whatever. OK, and inside here, let's start with a category link. So category, this is a class name of category link. And I can do text align center. I probably already done that actually with Bootstrap. I want to display it as block. I want the text decoration to be none if we have any links. And let's do let's do a hover over effect, a simple one. Transition, let's do our uh, 250 milliseconds all. And let's do a little hover effect here. So category, link, and then hover. And I'm just going to scale it. So uh, trans, no, no, it's transform, isn't it? Transform, scale of 1.1. Close this. For the next bit, let's do the image now. So the image would be category underscore 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 image and then what I'm going to do is display this as flex I'm going to justify the content to be center align items center uh, height let's put as 100 pixels 
margin bottom is going to be uh, 10 pixels and let's put a little bit of a box shadow around so this is going to be zero pixels three pixels six pixels and i'm going to put RG, rgba of 0 0.0.0, 0 .0 and then point sorry point 0.16 i think that should work and then overflow needs to be set to none we don't want the uh sorry to hidden we don't want the card the images to overflow and then i'm gonna put a border radius of eight pixels for the corners lastly we want to make sure that our image inside kind of fits all the time so we're gonna do dot category image and then we select the actual image inside and then we can do width of 100% all the time and we want object fit to be set to cover save this and hope for the best refresh and as you can see this is looking pretty nice obviously this is going to change from the database and I actually want to change this manually okay that's pretty cool let's change this one to say view all I've prepared an image for this so let me go back and go to index.ejs so this one I'm going to change let's say so the image is going to be called view all.jpg I think I'm going to change the old tag to be view or view all categories loading lazy that's fine and then this is going to be saying view all and the link the link could be potentially categories i haven't yet decided on this categories i think that would make sense so if we save this refresh uh we have kind of like a view all button i've kind of cheated and photoshopped three dots in here uh but yeah you can make it a little bit better so this is all good i think if we do the next section which is going to be kind of like the actual recipes we're going to have different sections like latest american thai indian uh, and so on so maybe if we do that then we can look into uh doing the database stuff very shortly okay let's look into the next section which will be the latest recipes and once we build the css for that well it's not going to be much css but once we build the section for that hopefully the rest will be uh easy to duplicate and so let me tidy this up and let's have a look so categories and i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna say latest i just put latest start and then latest end like so and inside here is where we're gonna put the latest recipes now for this i'm gonna create a section here so let's do did i create a section for this i mean yeah this could be could have been a section it doesn't matter too much for now okay this could be a section and then this section is going to have a class of padding bottom four padding top four and i could have used the padding i could have used the other one and then we can do a div with the class name of d display flex margin bottom of two align items center and then inside here we're going to have a title so with h2 i'm going to put latest recipes latest uh, recipes like so and we're gonna have a link on the other side so this is gonna be href with the link of probably explore latest let's leave it like this class name will be ms auto to push it on the other side so this is gonna be or view more button like so and then underneath here is where we're gonna have every single recipe like the cards so let's do a div with the class name of row and then row calls to row calls large five and then g2 g large three okay not too bad now inside here we're gonna have very similar to the top we're gonna have a link for the card so href and this is going to go to recipe and then we'll probably have an id in here which we'll add later on so don't worry about this at the moment and then this is going to be a class name of co and then text center and then we're gonna reuse the category link class like so 
close this and inside here again to be fair we could just copy this i think let's have a look uh yeah we could just copy this i think so let's copy that and change this one to something else let me grab a recipe okay let's put this one here uh i'm gonna put the image of this one here and let's put the name of i don't know Okay, chocolate banoffee. I'm gonna copy this, put it as a no text. It doesn't really matter at this point, to be completely honest with you. That's absolutely fine. But one thing that I'm not gonna like now is that if I was to refresh, the latest recipe image is gonna be exactly the same size as this, which I don't want. So I'm gonna do a quick modifier for this to make the image a lot bigger. And to do this, where we have the category image, I'm just gonna put category image dash dash and then large so let's create this style this is gonna be category image and i'm just gonna put it here maybe dash dash large and i just want to change the size of this into be to be height of 330 pixels let's have a look okay this works quite well and let's copy now the card and paste it a couple of times i'm gonna make a bit of space because this is a row and we just need more cards. One, two, three, four, or five. I don't know how many I need actually. Can't remember. So let's check it out. Okay, one more. Let me put one more. This is obviously a demo. It's going to come from the database. Okay, that's looking good. Um, of course, we're going to have uh, a few more. We're going to have like American food, Thai food, uh, Indian, Spanish, whatever we have on the list and yeah that's that's looking pretty good the link is there um and the next section that we need to do uh but i'm not going to copy the other sections just now uh because i'm going to do it from the database and then we can just replicate them but uh let's do the last section which is to submit recipe so let's go here at the bottom and maybe create another section okay this uh this is the latest here I'm going to copy this and create another section. So this is going to be uh, the submit section. I'm going to come one more time. And, and then inside here, let's do the, um, let's do a section as we've started with sections. I wish I'd done the first one. I mean, we can change the first one as well. It doesn't really matter. Let's do a section with the class name of px4 and then py5 and then my my5 and then text center like so and then inside this section i'm gonna have an image this image is gonna have the class name of the block mx auto mv4 image fluid then we need uh, actually we need the image source so this is gonna be here so the image source is gonna be slash image and then publish dash recipe dot png uh, we do need an old text as well so let's just add it here maybe and this is gonna be publish your for free today we could definitely do with the width of saying 566 and the height to be 208 and then maybe loading lazy like so close this the next thing i want to do i want to have a title for this so i'm going to put an h1 width actually this is going to be the title again so let's do that and let's put a class name for the title of display 5 uh, fw bold and then for the next section let's do a little paragraph so let's do a div with the class name of code dash large six and then mx auto i think that would do and inside here we're gonna have the paragraph the paragraph is gonna have a class of lead margin bottom four 
And inside here we can do, I'm going to copy and paste some text, publish your recipe in front of thousands of people for free. Actually, I'm just going to do that. Publish your recipe in front of thousands of people for free. And I think that should do the job for now. And also let me tidy this up. So it's one, one line. And then we can do another div with the class name of uh, the grid and then gap to the small flex justify content small center and inside here we can do a link with href and then this is going to go to a page called submit recipe that we're going to create later the recipe and then this is going to have the class name of btn btn primary btn dark btn large and btn large and we're going to say submit recipe okay that's absolutely fine we've closed the div one div two divs okay that's looking good let's test it out save it let's go back to the website refresh and the image seems to be broken so let's have a look at least the old tag is showing so this is gonna be did i misspell it probably publish dash publish recipe that png i think i've called it let me have a look let me copy this name uh images and then uh, okay i've misspelled the image is actually fine i've misspelled source so this needs to be sir s rc instead and save this and if we go back and refresh you will see that the image is popping up this is linked to submit page uh this is linked to the submit page as well and yeah that's not so bad okay maybe the next thing that we could do is concentrate on creating a categories model and maybe we can just uh put some dummy data into the database so we can display it and we'll work away from there okay this is a great way to get into mongodb and create some categories and then we'll do the more complicated stuff with the right recipes later on and let's go to mongodb so if you go to mongodb.com uh, register for a free account or paid whatever you wish and then just make sure that you sign in I'm going to do that now and once you sign in i'm going to zoom a little bit just so you can see a little bit better but once you sign in your dashboard will be probably empty uh you won't have a cluster or anything like that but that's what you need to do you will need to click on the create button here and create a free cluster i think i believe that the first one is free i've already created one as you can see it says free shared and if i was to go on edit configuration just to show you super quickly mine is based in ireland i think that was the closest free one that i can get and it says m0 sandbox shared ram 512 megabytes storage and yeah it says free forever so create yourself a free cluster i just don't think that i can create another one now i might be wrong but uh, but that's all you need to do is to create a cluster and once you're done the next very important bit would be to allow yourself access network access so if you click here network access you will have to add your ip address i've added my other computer as well you will only be able to connect to your cluster from the following list of ip addresses and in order to add yours all you need to do is click the plus sign here add ip address and you can even click on add current ip address and that will do it for you once you do that this will add your ip address and you should be able to access your database but one more thing that you need to check out is the database access you will need to create database access if there isn't one set up yet and in order to do that you're gonna have to just go here 
database access at new database user and just set up a password and make sure that you remember the password as well as we are going to need it. Okay. Once you're done with this, let's go back to the database. And the first thing that we need to do is click on connect. If you click on connect and click on connect your application, this will give you this code in here, which we're going to have to grab and put that in, into or into our environment uh, variables. So this would be, if we open the project, this will be into our .env file that we haven't yet created. So let's create that dot env this is going to hold all variables and, and maybe we can call this variable mongo db underscore uri and that would be equals the line that we just copied but the two things that we need to notice here that is your username which i just showed you here if you go back to database access this is my username and so i'm going to need my password as well so i'm going to put that on uh, right now but all you need to do is replace this with your password and then the next important bit to notice is that this will be your database name so you can change this now if you wish to uh, or you can leave it as the foot and it will be just called my first database i'm going to change mine to be called recipes like so so this is going to be my database name and i'm going to save this so let's exit this and let's set up our database connection. All right, to do that, let's open the Explorer quickly and let's navigate to the server and then models. And inside here is where we're going to create our database connection. So to do this, let's create a new file and let's call it database.js. Inside here is where we're going to uh, include, well, require MongoDB and connect to our database. So first of all, we need to include Mongoose. So we're going to do uh, const Mongoose and we're going to require Mongoose like so. Then the next thing that we need to do is connect. And to do that, we need to do Mongoose dot connect. And we need to pass the connection string that we put in our environment file here. So I can grab this from here and I can do process dot env to grab that variable and then the Mongo URI. So we're passing it here and inside here, we're going to pass a couple of options. And the first one is to use the new URL parser, use new URL and we need to set that to true and also we need use unified topology and we need to set this to true as well like so and then we need to we need to set the database connection const db equals mongoose.connection like so close this and then we can check whether we have connected successfully or we have an error first of all let's do an error db dot on and then inside here we put error and we want to maybe console log something i'm just going to use the example from the documentation so console dot law sorry console dot error and then bind and then we put console and then with the and then we can just put a message here, connection error like so. Close this and then we can check whether the connection was successful and we can do this on db once, db once open. And then we can put a function here. And then once it's open, maybe we can just console lock connect it. Okay, that's it. And that would be it for database. And now all we need to do is create our first model. So I'm going to create a new file here and this is going to be called uh, category model, category.js. And I'm going to put this with a capital letter like so. And the first thing that we need to do is include it in here. So require it, sorry. So I'm going to put models and we need to require that model and it's going to be under dot and then category. Here it is. We don't need to specify dot JS or anything like that. And we're done. I think now might be a good uh, time to create a very simple model. So what I'm going to do is 
close this, close everything that we don't need, and let's concentrate on the model. Now, the model is basically a collection of data, and we can kind of like design the way um, or database is structured or collection is structured. Let me show you. I think this is a good starter because the category it's kind of like fairly simple. The first thing that we need to do here is require mongoose. Cons mongoose equals require and then we require goose like so and then we need to create a schema. To create a new mongoose schema what we need to do is create a const. Uh, let's call it category schema maybe. Uh, this will be equals to new mongoose like so and then schema inside here is where we pass the options for the schema i'm going to show you now uh, but before we do that let's export this so we're going to do module dot export export sorry and this will be mongoose dot model and then we need to export this model as let's say category and then we need to export this to, uh, we need to export this. So this will be your collection name, uh, which I'll show you in a second. And that's it. So let's create a very simple mongoose uh, schema. So for this one, I'm just going to have name and an image. Let's put name. And inside here, we can just put a type and we can specify the type that we want for this. In this example, we're going to have string. Uh, just because the name is going to be only text and if we want we can set it to be a required field uh, we're just going to insert some data and that's it we're not going to touch the categories too much but the recipes we will have to uh, insert data from a form so let's do required and then this is required like so and then to create another one all we need to do is put comma and then we can even copy this and the next one will be the image and let's do type of string and this field is required that's it this is a very basic model model sorry schema and now let's have a look at how we can actually insert some data super quickly and well more importantly how we can display the data from the database. All right, if I go back to the database uh, and we click browse collection, you will see that currently there is no data in here. And let's have a look at how we can load some. I mean, you can load some sample data, but I want to insert some categories with the uh, with appropriate images and so on. Um, so let me show you how we're going to do that. And then we're going to display them on the page, replacing this row here. All right, let's go back, close this. Let's go back to recipe controller. And first of all, I'm thinking let's insert some demi data. And I couldn't find an easier way to do that. We could do it through the command line, but I think this is going to be a little bit easier for everybody as well. So I'm going to do a very quick function and put some data in it. So uh, this is actually going to show you a very simple way of inserting uh, data as well. So, okay, let's do an asynchronous function first of all async and this is going to be a function and I'm going to call it insert dummy category data and then inside here uh, we're going to have to wrap everything into a try catch as this is a say asynchronous function we can wrap everything into a try catch and what we have to do to insert data is literally await and then we can grab the categories model, which we haven't yet uh, put. So let's do that. So we're going to have it in here. So const. So first of all, we need to require the database. Require. And then we require the database in here. So dot dot. Uh, think it was models and then database like so. And then we need to require our first model. So const. This is going to be the categories. Category equals require. And then we require the dot dot slash models and then category. That's it. Now we can use this model to insert data. So inside here, await, we can put in here, await category, and then we can do, and then we can use one of the inserts, one of the insert methods, which is called insert many. 
and inside here we can put the data that we want to insert and if for some reason this fails we want to catch the error and in this case maybe we can just console log something let's console log and we can just console log the error like so uh, maybe we can do it like error plus comma plus the error and that's it that's a very simple function that will insert some data obviously we need to run that function maybe somewhere uh, I'm only going to run this once to insert some data quickly and then I'm going to remove it maybe I can leave it for you if you want to uh, reuse it and I've already created some dummy data so I'm going to copy that data if I can find it and here it is I want to show you it to you first it's basically an array it's basically the same as the uh, model here we have name and image and I've just put a few of them so we have name Thai uh, image Thai food name American image American food and so on so I'm going to grab this and what I need to do is insert it into here I know it's a little bit of a cheat but let's do it so now if I was to refresh the application that should run and hopefully we'll get some records inside okay let's do it everything seems to be running no errors which is good hopefully if I go to mongodb now and if I click on the refresh button you will see that we have the database name created which is called recipes and we have the collection of categories inside here one thing that you might want to look at is that uh, all of the objects that we just inserted mongodb was clever enough to add uh, unique identifiers for every single one which can be useful in our application at some point we probably won't use it today on this we we'll use it on the recipes but as you can see it does add a unique identifier which is pretty cool and yeah and that's it so we have some data in here and now we can use this data to insert in here let's have a look at how we can do that so i'm going to remove this obviously because we don't want to be inserting any more stuff but i'm going to leave it for you uh, when i upload the code i'm going to leave it for you to have and now let me show you how we can do a query and how we can pass the object to the front page all right first of all this is our home page controller so everything is going to go in here again we're going to have to wrap everything into a try catch so let's do try sorry let's do a try catch in here let me make some space and if this succeeds obviously we want to render the page uh, so nothing changes here we are rendering the index page with the title cooking block home if things go wrong uh, we could do uh, i mean we could go to a narrow page for now i think it's just best to like maybe res a status of 500 so let's do res dot status something helpful for us and then send message e uh, actually that's the error and then message and then all error occurred and that would be it you can just console log if you wish and now inside here inside here is where we're gonna create our first database query to grab the categories what i'm gonna do first of all is i only want a few categories so one two three four five five so five categories is what i want so i'm gonna create kind of like a constant number for that limit number and i'm gonna equal this to five and then what I'm going to do is create const categories object and this is going to be equals await and then we're going to grab the category uh, model there and then do await category dot uh, find and we want to find everything so we're not going to put anything in here but I'll show you how to add filters later on and I just want to limit this to the limit number that we just created which is limit number five and that's it i mean i could have put the five here but i'm going to be doing a, little, a few more queries that are going to be using this number so i think that will work well and in order for us to display the categories we need to pass this object that we're getting from the database so what we're going to have to do is grab this and just like we're passing the title here i'm going to do a comma and just pass categories so now if this succeeds we should be able to use this and display the data 
So let's head off to views and or front page and let's find categories. Where is it? Here are the categories. Obviously, I'm going to remove all of them except the top one because we want to loop through it. And the last one was the view or button. So this is what we want to loop through. Okay, so what we can do with EJS, let's start EJS. Let's end EJS here. And what we can do is let's check if the categories, sorry, if the category is not equals empty. And if it's not, we can do something. So let's put a curly bracket here and close it in here. Don't forget that. Okay. And now inside here is where we can do a loop. This is going to be a for each. So let's open EJS and let's do categories. Is it category or categories? Categories, I think. Categories dot for each. For each like so. And then we can do function. And then this is going to be, maybe we'll put category. And then the index. So now we open this with a curly bracket. Uh, make sure that we close the EJS here as well. Uh, don't forget that it's important and we need to look through the whole bit here. So I'm going to open EJS here, close the curly bracket and close the function, this one here. And actually, yeah, we don't need this one here. Sorry. So yeah, we close this bracket and we close this one here as well. And we end up, we finish the EJS. And now I can actually use this to display some data. So for example, we might want to display the image. So what I'm going to do is instead of uh, image American food, I'm going to replace this with EJS. Like so, and this is going to be category dot uh, image, I believe, because we're going to the category and our database has the uh, image here. So we want to grab that. Let me copy this again, and I'm going to replace this old text here with the category name. And I'm going to copy this again, and I'm going to put the category name here. Okay, if this works, uh, I think everything everything is looking good. Potentially, we're going to have to change the link as well in a second, but let's have a look whether this works first of all. So if I go back to the website and refresh, you will see that all of this is coming now from the database. And if I was to go to the database, uh, let me zoom in and change Thai, let's say Thai. One, two, three, update this. So this is on the database. I just updated it. And if I was to refresh, you'll see that we get in Thai one, two, three. And that's it. That's how simple it is to pull something from the database. And we'll be doing the same for the rest. Let me change this back so it doesn't look ugly. Okay. And I was thinking since we have the view more button uh, put to categories, maybe we can just change the link here to be categories and then the name of the uh, category. So what's going to happen is, let's have a look. So what's going to happen now this, what's going to happen is if I hover over, you will see that this has the link of categories and then tie. So potentially we're going to be creating a categories page where we're going to list all of the categories by clicking on this button. And then if we want to click on a specific category, we should be able to do that as well and query all the Thai recipes or American and so on. Maybe we should do that now, actually. All right, let's create our first other page rather than uh, the home page and pull out all of the categories again. And then let's have a look at how we can get individual ones. So to do this, first of all, we're going to have to create a new page that we just uh, listed here, categories.ejs. So I'm going to put an H1 here categories and save it. We're going to have to go to the routes and create a new route. So this route is going to be get again, but we're going to get the categories. Categories and this one, maybe we can call explore categories. Explore categories like so and save. So now we need to create this controller. So I'm going to grab this, close it, uh, close the index and create a new controller just like this. So I'm going to paste this for a sec, copy all of this. And let's just change get categories. So we know which one it is. And this is going to be uh, categories. 
categories. Let's get this and change the export to home page to explore categories. And now we might just have to change this a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do a pagination here, but what I'm going to do is just change the limit number to 20 or whatever. And then we want to render the uh, categories page. So categories, the title will be, I don't know, cooking blog uh, view or no, I don't know, categories. Categories, we're passing the categories and we can do exactly the same thing as we were doing on the front page now to loop through the categories. So what I'm going to do is go to the index.ejs and I'm going to attempt to copy this first of all to see whether I can make it work. And inside the categories, I'm going to paste this first of all. So we're checking for categories. Uh, yeah, I think that might work. Let me test it first and then we'll make it look better. Okay, so refresh. If I click on view all, it goes to categories. And as you can see, all the categories are listed, but for some reason they're a little bit broken, which we're going to fix now. Okay, at least we're getting everything from the database, which is good. All right, let's fix this. So first of all, I'm going to create a class for the H1. Let me close this. Let me close this. So we're working on categories EJS. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a class of padding button four, and I'm going to put explore categories like so. And then I'm going to put a breadcrumb in here. So if you go to bootstrap quickly, uh, get started breadcrumb and, and I think this one is good. Maybe let's try this one. Uh, this is going to be the home link and this is going to be the explore categories. So let's put that on. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. We'll see how it looks on the page. And then I'm going to create a row. So let's go a div with a class name of row, row calls two. Is it calls two or is it call, call two? I think it's calls actually. Row calls large five, G2, G large three, margin bottom four, close. And I'm going to wrap everything inside this row here. Uh, just push everything in and now hopefully this will look a little bit better than before. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. We have the breadcrumb here, explore categories. Uh, we can go home if we click on this and we have a couple of categories. It doesn't look amazing, uh, but obviously you can style this the way you want. And as I say, I'm not going to be doing pagination today. Otherwise it's going to take far too long. And that's it. Now that we have the categories, what I want to do is actually, when I click on a category, I want to pass the ID in here. So for example, Thai, and I want to display all the Thai, all Thai recipes. But at the moment, we don't actually have any recipes. So we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to create a recipe model and insert some recipes in order for us to do that, which is a little bit annoying. So I think that we, can do that now and maybe display some of the recipes in here as well and we'll work our way as we go along. Maybe we can do the detailed recipes when we click on them as well and at the end we're going to do the form. All right, let's do the recipe uh, model now. So first of all, it's going to be exactly the same as the category one. So what we can do, let's go to category and copy this. Let's create a new file called recipe js and inside here i'm gonna paste everything and just change the naming so instead of category let's put recipe copy this change it here at the bottom this needs to be recipe as well and i think that's looking good of course we're gonna change the whole uh thing in here so i'm gonna remove all this and start from the top but one more thing that we need to do is include it in the database.js file. So let's include recipe. And very important thing that we need to do is inside the controller, we need to include that at the top as well here. So this is going to be our const recipe. And it's going to be equals models slash recipe like so. And I think that's good. If we were to go back to a recipe model, we can start constructing this. So this is going to have a name, comma, 
Then we're going to have description. This is going to be a string as well. Uh, we can have an email. I'm only having a few, not too, not too many email can be a string as well. And as you can see here, we put in required on every single field. They don't have to be, uh, but it's going to be helpful to have. We're going to have ingredients. This, this one is going to be a type of array this time because we want to be able to add more ingredients like sugar, ice, water, whatever. This is going to be again required, but yeah, that's fine. And then let's create another one. The other one is going to be, oh, make sure that we put commas everywhere. Uh, ingredients, the next one is going to be category. Now I only want to have specific categories. So I'm going to put uh, enum, which basically only allows whatever we put inside here. And I'm going to have a few. So let's put Thai, American, Chinese, Mexican, and let's put Indian. Okay. Uh, we need to put a comma in here as well. And what else do we have? And last, we're going to have another one, which is going to be an image. So this is going to be image. Uh, this can be a string and it's required. Yeah, that's fine. Everything is looking good in here. Save this. And I'm going to insert some dummy data just like I've done it before. I know, it's, I know it's a little bit of cheating here, but I'm going to copy this so I can leave it for you. So if you wanted to insert some dummy data as well, there's probably a better way of doing it but let's do it so insert the me recipe data i'm going to put this one on recipe data put this in here to initialize the function and of course we can remove all this and i'm going to paste some dummy data that i've copied from the jamie oliver website um, i have put a the source link as well and I've only put some of the information of each recipe. Obviously, we need to give credit. Anyway, so I'm going to paste all the information here. As you can see, we have name stuff, right? Vegetables, description, source. Uh, well, that's part of the description. We have email, different ingredients listed. We have category of Chinese, image, stuff, right? And so on. If I save this, uh, make sure that we've saved everything, saved everything. And one last thing that I didn't do just now is at the top, I'm awaiting category insert many. So that needs to change to the one here, to the recipe. We need to change the model. So we're inserting it into the correct one. Save this. Let's run the website. And we broke it. Enum can only be set an array of six string or numbers, not mixed. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Sorry, this is a string. That's my fault. So category needs to be a string. And hopefully now if we restart the server, that's all good. Let's restart. Okay, that, that worked. But did I close MongoDB? All right, I must have closed the page. So let's go back. And as you can see, we have the categories and we have another one now, another collection here called recipes. And uh, inside it, we have all the recipes that we just inserted. Don't worry, we will make the form uh, so you can insert them uh, with a form. But for now, I think it's just good to have some recipes. And the good thing about this is that each recipe has a unique ID created from MongoDB. Uh, we have the name, description, email, all of the ingredients uh, here as an array. So we can add as many as we want. We have categories, so we can query them by categories and we have the image. All right, let me show you how we can actually uh, populate this with the database ones. All right, I think that's going to be fun. So what we're going to do is let's go back to controllers. Obviously, this needs to be gone now. Otherwise, we're going to keep inserting Stuff, but I'm going to leave this for you. Uh, I don't know whether to leave it here, to be honest, but I'll leave it for now and then decide later. All right, uh, because um, because we're working on the homepage, we need to go back to the to the homepage controller. 
So inside here, the query is going to be exactly the same as what we're doing here, but we need to query the recipes instead. And not only that, I want to only query the latest recipes to fill this one here. So in order to do that, let's do uh, const latest and we're going to do the same thing as above, await, uh, but then we're going to grab the recipe model and put dot find. And this time we want, what we want to do is if you want to grab, the, uh, we're not going to put any filters here, but if we just do this, it's going to grab the first submitted, uh, the first submitted recipes, which we don't want. We, we want the latest ones. So to do that, we're going to do dot sort and then we're going to do so with curly brackets in here, we're going to do underscore sort by ID minus one, just like so. And then we can limit this as well. So limit, just like above, I'm going to limit it by five. Close, just like so. That's it. We can technically pass this object into here now and display it. But what I want to do, because we're going to be doing a few different queries, I'm going to put everything into a food kind of uh, object. So let's do const food. And then this, this is going to be equals latest. And I'm going to be adding a few more here in a minute, but it's going to make sense when I do it. So I'm going to pass this food object, which is going to contain the latest one, the latest uh, from the database. So let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to copy this, pass this inside here, and we're going to do the same thing that we've done with the categories, but we just need to go inside food and then latest. So if you go back to the homepage, and find the latest here. So obviously I'm going to have to remove all of these because we're going to loop through them with EJS. I'm going to make some space so you can concentrate on this. So we could potentially do what we've done above. Uh, uh, we can do, and if uh, we could try, if food is not, if food is not equals uh, empty, then we could do, oops. So annoying. Okay. So close EJS here. Open EJS in here. Close the if statement. And now we can do a for each loop inside here. And I'm going to show you something else as well. Uh, if we do. Now, if we go into the food object and then we go latest, then we can do a for each and we can do a function. Then we can pass inside here recipe. Recipe and we can put index. Index, open curly brackets, grab all this. Uh, close EJS, wrap everything inside here. Like so. And let's have a look. And now I can use this recipe to populate the data. So for example, I want the link to be recipe and maybe we just put the recipe ID. So I'm going to put EJS in here and I'm going to put equals uh, recipe. Let me grab this dot. If you want to grab the ID, it's underscore ID. This is coming from the database uh, here. This is the ID. So we're grabbing this number. And that's it. And now if we wanted to grab, what else do we need? We have the image. So we might want to grab the image. So that would be recipe dot image. And we might as well grab the name for the old tag. I think we're going to put it in here and we'll put the name. I'm going to copy this and just put it here for the name as well. And technically speaking, this should loop through and display the latest products. Save this and hope for the best as always. Let's go back, refresh. And as you can see, the images are broken. And this is because I actually want those images to be in a different folder. So this is going to be the upload. And when we add a recipe, uh, all the recipe images are going to go into public uploads, but I don't have any of the sample images now. So I'm going to have to copy a few, copy a few inside here, just for the example and paste. 
So we have a couple of images now. We've changed the folder to be uploads, where we can just do slash uploads maybe. And then if you go back, let's refresh. And as you can see, these are coming from the database and these are the latest recipes. Um, I can, if I was to remove the uh, sort here, let's say we remove the sort, you will see that the result will change. There we go. The result yeah, is changing. And these are, uh, I think these were the, the first ones added to the database. And that's why. So that's why we want the latest here. All right. We can do a couple of more here as well. So for example, we can do, let's do the queries first, maybe. And then we can do them uh, at once at the front end. All right. So we've got the latest. Maybe let's do uh, Thai, American and Chinese. So what I could do is do another query, const Thai. And this is going to be slightly different. So we can do a wait recipe dot find and inside here we can pass different filters now this is quite useful because for example at this point i only want to find the thai recipes and display them on the front page the way to do that is we can go into the categories so each recipe has a category this one has american uh this one has thai and so on so we want to filter by category to do this we can do find and we can put category like so in single quotes and then column and then we can put the category which in this case is Thai uh, and we can also limit the results like so and I'm, I'm going to put the limit number again and let's do exactly the same thing for the American and Chinese so one two this is going to be American this is going to be Chinese and if I copy this, I can change the category to American with capital A and I can change this to Chinese to Chinese with capital C. Now I can move those objects into one big field object. So we have latest, we have Thai, we have American, we have Chinese and we pass this as a whole into here and now, and now I can reuse it. If you go back to Let's close all of this. If you go back to the home page, we can now literally copy this section here and start changing it. So let's start with the Thai recipes. I'm going to make a lot of space so we can see. And instead of doing latest recipes, let's do Thai. Thai recipes, view more is fine. Uh, maybe we can. So this might need to be changed to categories. And then we'll put Thai, but we'll we'll figure out this later on. Let's do it for now, actually, just so that we don't forget. And then inside here, we check for food, food latest, but we don't want latest, we want Thai. And, and everything else stays the same because we're using the recipe here to pull the data. So Thai food should be done. If we go back, refresh, we have the Thai recipes only, which is good. Um, one thing that I wanted to show you is that sometimes if an object doesn't exist, you might get a problem and you could solve this instead of doing the if Thai food, uh, you could do something else. Uh, you, you might have seen this before, but you could do type of food dot, uh, in this case, Thai. And then you can say, if it's not equals equals undefined, obviously they are defined in the bottom. Uh, you could do ampersand, ampersand, and then food dot uh, tie, and then dot length. Bigger than zero. And then this should also work. So this could be a useful, uh, yeah, it's also working. This could be a useful trick. Uh, if the object doesn't exist, that's another way of you checking whether this object is undefined. And uh, let's have one more. So the next one is going to be, the next one is going to be American. So we can put American recipes. What else do we need? Uh, American. Then that's absolutely fine. That needs to change to American American, just so we don't get it. Let's just do with American not equals uh, empty. A little bit easier. Okay, 
Uh, so that's fine. That's fine. And we should be able to get the American through that. So Thai, uh, American is all here. Lastly, let's just pull one more. Just for this example, I'm going to get, so this is going to be Thai. Let me tidy this up. Okay. Uh, this is going to be American. Thai. Okay, this is a little bit better. Uh, this is going to be, what did I say, Chinese last one? Uh, Chinese recipes. And one thing that I didn't do on every single recipe is to put an error statement. So if there is no recipes, uh, we potentially want to say no items. Uh, so we could do this in here. Sorry about that. Else open and we need to close it. I can fix this quickly. Uh, hopefully it will be fine. Uh, we can put a paragraph of saying no, no items found. Uh, that looks ugly. So let's put no items found like so. And I can possibly just replace this on every single one. Not a big deal. Uh, you don't have to have it. And there is space. And do we need the latest? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Hopefully this should all work. Okay, so we have, uh, we didn't change the last one, which is Chinese. I got caught up. Chinese, uh, for each Chinese, that's it. No, it is fine. Okay, cool. So that needs to be changed to Chinese as well. Save and let's have a look. Uh, Chinese recipes are working. American recipes are working. Thai recipes are working. All good. Um, if we click on view, these are working as well. Maybe we could have put this with uh, the big image for the categories, but it doesn't matter for now. I would say that we should do the detailed view next. So when we click on a recipe, it displays it in a nice detailed view. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So first of all, let's close some of these. Let's go back. Let's go to, uh, let's start with the route. So maybe we can put them under a recipe um, page. So let's do router dot get, and this is going to be recipe. Then we need to pass the ID of the recipe that we want to display like so. I'm going to show you how this is going to work and we need to create a controller. So this is going to be the recipe controller. Uh, what are we going to say to this? I don't know what to call it. Maybe explore recipe. Explorer recipe will do and close. All right. So now when we click on a product, we want to go to the recipe page with the product ID and we want to query it and display the detailed view. All right, let's have a look at how we can do that. So we have the router here. We're obviously going to need to create the recipe page, which is going to be here. So recipe.ejs. E uh, we're going to have to have, so let's say recipe for now. Uh, let's close this. So the router is there. We're going to have to have the controller. All right, let's copy the categories one and we'll change it. So let's, this is going to be a get recipe with the ID slash uh, dot ID. And let's say recipe page. And this needs to be changed to the one that I just created. So explore recipe like that. Um, we're not going to need a limit here because we are only grabbing one. Uh, obviously, we're going to use the recipe model and we need to change the query as well. So let's change all this. You know what? Let's let's delete all of this and start from the beginning. So this, first of all, explore recipe, we've changed. That's fine. So we have res.render and we want to render the recipe page. So let's do that. Recipe. The title can be whatever you like. But for now, let's remove this as well. And now let's build it from scratch. So first of all, we need to grab the ID of each recipe. So if you remember on the homepage, every single page, uh, every single recipe has an ID. If you 
see at the bottom left corner. So we want to grab that ID in order to get the recipe. So to do this, we can use the rec.param. So let's do rec.params. So let's do let recipe ID. ID equals rec.params and dot ID is to get the ID. This is the ID from here. You can call it whatever you like. Uh, that's what we do. And now we just need to do a query on the database. So we're going to do const recipe equals await and then recipe dot find by ID this time. And then we're going to pass the ID. So we're querying the ID and we should get one object only. And then we just need to pass the recipe in here as like that. And now we can render it. So if everything has gone well, we should be able to go to, first of all, we can even probably click on, let's have a look, let's refresh, click on an item and it goes to recipe. That's, that's good. And as you can see, we have recipe and we have the recipe ID, which we're grabbing. Now we can display all of this data with EJS. So if we go to the recipe.ejs, we might as well build the whole page. And what we can do is let's start with EJS. So if recipe is not equals uh, no, maybe then we can close. Uh, or if it's not equals empty, uh, we have to try this and then close okay this is our if statement and we're closing everything everything else is going to be inside here so uh if this works we're going to say h1 works let's test it uh, and we're getting an error and this is because okay this is because i didn't open curly bracket here and let's close it all right works that's good and now let's build our page I'm going to grab some breadcrumbs from, what's it, categories? I'm going to grab this, paste them in here. So we have home and maybe we can have the active one to be the recipe ID. No, sorry, uh, that's not even linked. So that's fine. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is just put the recipe name in here, I think. So I'm going to start EJS, put dash and then close EJS like so. And I'm going to put recipe.name like so if we save this refresh as you can see the recipe name is coming up and we can now continue uh, let's create a row for this one div class of row like so and inside here we're gonna create a couple of columns so we're gonna have a first column for the product image so div with a class of col 12 when we're mobile we want it to be full width and then we want col middle to be four Inside here, let's uh, add our image. So this is going to be image, uh, source, and this is going to be equals uploads, slash, and then we can grab this actually, and just hopefully just change this to image. And then let's put a couple of classes to make it look nice. So we can do uh, image dash fluid, Sticky dash top. Uh, sticky top is just nice to have. It will look cool, I think. And maybe I'm going to put style. And the style I'm going to put top of 20, which you will see what's going to happen. Probably do need a note. So let's put an old tag and just put recipe.name for the old tag. And do we put, and let's put loading lazy. Lazy, like so. And that's it for the image. All right. For the next bit, we're going to have kind of like the information of the recipe. So let's do another column called div with the class name of col-12, col-medium8. And this is going to have a row, class of row. And this is going to have a class, uh, sorry, another div with the class of col-12. So we're creating another column. And inside this column, I'm going to create an H1 with the recipe name. So it's nicely displayed. Then I'm going to create another column here, this class of co 12 medium 
don't really know. And if you remember, early in this tutorial, we added bootstrap icons. So I'm going to use one in here. So I, so I'm going to add an icon here. So this is going to be I with a class of bootstrap icon, bootstrap icons tag made just to make it look nice. And I'm going to put, should I put, I'm going to put the recipe, um, recipe category here. I think that's going to look nice. And then we can have the instructions or description. So in this case, we're going to have div with the class name of code 12 uh, style. I'm going to put white space and I'm going to tell you why for this pre dash line. And this is basically if we don't have white space uh, between the lines when we insert it into the database, all of the text might be cramped. I might, I'll show you in a second if I can find an example. And I think that's going to solve the problem. And then here, let's put like, I don't know, H4 or something. And let's do cooking instructions. Instructions. Then let's put the recipe uh, description. What else do we need? We need the ingredients, but for the ingredients, I'm thinking of creating another row. Where is this row? Okay, I'm going to create another row inside here. So this is going to be diff with the class name of row, but in top form. And we're going to do another diff inside here with the class name of uh, co12. Uh, inside here, we're going to put F, uh, sorry, H4 ingredients. And for the ingredients, we are going to have to put uh, an ordered list. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do here. Because the ingredients themselves are actual array, I actually want to display them one by one in the list. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to do a for each in here. So a little bit of work, but it's going to be nice. So this UL is going to have a class of list group list group flush. And inside here, we're going to have a list and each list is going to actually, we're going to loop for each list. So let's do the for, uh, the for loop. So what I'm going to do, start EJS, come on, start EJS and then uh, recipe dot ingredients. And then we're going to do for each and then function. Oops. And then we put the ingredients. It doesn't have to be that long. You can make that uh, a little bit smaller if you wish. And then index. And then we put open curly bracket, close curly bracket, but we need to, we need to grab those two. Close EJS here. Because we're looping, we need to open EJS here. Close it with the two brackets. So curly bracket and normal bracket. Close EJS like so. And inside the list, we can then put class name of list group dash item. And inside here is where we can add the ingredients. So we can do, uh, let's have like dash ingredients. And hopefully this would, let me just tidy this up a little bit. So it's on one line. Hopefully we should be able to look through this list and display all the ingredients for each product. And I can put that inside like so. And one last thing, if something didn't work, maybe we can put an else here, uh, open it and close it. I keep forgetting this. Uh, else do we need? Yeah, we need a curly bracket. And we need to put a message for my as well. So no item found. Okay. Hopefully if I've done this correctly, we should go back. Refresh. And as you can see, we have the image here. We have the title. We have the category. Maybe we need some space between it. Uh, cooking instructions, uh, ingredients, and they're all nicely listed. And as I said, I've taken this from the Jamie Oliver website. It's only for learning purposes. If I'll show you, if I go down, actually, if I put the browser to be a bit smaller, this is what I've done with the sticky. I think it's just nice effect. Nice to have. Definitely just playing around. Uh, let me just Put space in here. Save. Uh, let's okay. A little bit of space, and if we go back, we can see that we have. I don't know if we click on any of them. Like let's say this one, uh, we get the recipe. Everything is working, um, and yeah, that's that's pretty cool.
So the next thing that we can do is potentially do the category. So if I go here and if I click on a specific category, I want to only display American food or Chinese food or Mexican food. So this is going to be very similar to what we've just done. Uh, first of all, let's find the category page and change this a little bit. So let me open it. Categories, categories, here we go. So categories, I want this image. Can I do the category image large, maybe at least? It's going to look a little bit better. It's going to make me feel better. Oh, those images are too small. Okay, ignore this, ignore this. Nobody saw this. I think the images of uh, have are too small for this. So I didn't choose the right images. Anyways, we want to link this. As you can see, all of them are linked. Categories, American, Chinese, Mexican, Indian, so on. So when I click on this, I want to only query the one that I've clicked on. Okay, let's have a look at how we can do that. So we're going to still use the same page. And let's go to the route. And let's create another category route. Shall we move it here so you can see? Let's, let's move it. Right. Uh, category, we're going to create another category route. This time, this is going to have an ID as well. We're going to pass an ID, just like we did with the recipes. Uh, this route is going to be still get. And let's say explore category by ID, maybe. By ID. I think that would work. Save this. And now let's go into controllers and create it. So I'm going to copy all of this. Or should we copy the category one? Let's copy the category one. And maybe we can have them sitting together as well, like so. So ignore the recipe for now. Maybe. OK, we're concentrating on this one here. Sorry about that. Uh, categories, and then we put uh, slash an ID just so we know. Uh, category ID, something like this. First of all, we need to change this. So it's explore categories by ID. Then we need to grab the ID from the page. So to do this, let's say that we do let category ID be equals rec dot params dot ID. So this is how we're getting the ID of the category. And now we can, let's leave the limit. I don't mind. And then uh, let's say, let's say that we have category by ID. And this is going to be equals await category find. And we need to put another filter. So we're going to look for category. And then category ID is where we get this from the parameter. I'm losing it. And OK, we need to pass this instead now. And let's have a look at how this is going to work. Because this page already has all this. So uh, let's have a look. OK, so if I was to click on this, we're having category is not equals empty. Interesting. We might have to do the trick with the type of here. Uh, because, let's have a look. yeah, we might have to do the trick with the type of because this does not exist anymore. Let me try that first of all. So we're going to do type of categories, not equals equals undefined. And categories dot length bigger than zero. Then we do this. OK, let's have a look whether this breaks again. OK, this doesn't break, so that fixed it. And now I can do, uh, can I do the same from the front page? I want to grab kind of like this. I'm going to grab this and see whether we can modify it. So I want to display this. So what I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing here. But we're going to say, where is it? We're going to say category by this, what we're passing. So we're going to say if type of category by the is undefined category by the length is equals uh, is bigger than zero. Then we want to do for each and then we want to put the recipe ID, image, name, name. That's why or not found. Maybe we need to remove this, but that's what we'll do in a second. OK, that's all working. The only thing that is not working now is the. Uh, OK, we're looking through the categories again. OK, we need to look through recipes now. So that's why. Recipe find category, category ID. So yeah, I needed to change the query. And now if you go back, 
and we do that as you can see we're getting the tile recipes i should have put uh let me put a link back to make it a little bit more intuitive let's say uh let's do categories okay so now if i click on categories we get the categories here put chinese we're getting a few if i put american we're getting the american ones and they're all linked to the recipe with the id so if i click on one we're getting that and then if we click on that we're getting that and so on so yeah pretty cool um i think i'm gonna consider this as done now uh potentially you could put the category name here instead but uh that's pretty easy to do with tjs as you already know how to do that i'm gonna leave it and what else do we have everything is working here uh we need to create the search i think this is a good one actually so let's create the search page now okay and this one is going to be different to the other ones this one is going to be post so let's copy this but just change it to post and we want to post to the search page so search like so and we have can do for the search should we just do search recipe uh search recipe like so and that's it i think post okay so we need to go to recipe controller and make one uh let's tidy all this up beautiful we need it around here so i'm gonna copy this paste it this is gonna be post and this is going to be search and this is going to be search and we need to create the search page as well but before that i'm going to grab this and just render it so i'm going to do a uh, rest.render in here and i'm going to render uh what do we do what do we do let's remove this and let's just do search and let's do search is the page that we want to render and this is the uh, controller okay that's it so now if we create a search page, let's do that. H1. Search. All right, let's see if this works, first of all. But post on this, we're going to search. And the reason this is working is because if we go to the main layout, in the header, if you remember, we had the form here. The form has the method of post and the action of search a very important thing in here is that the search to grab the search term i've put the name to be called search term i think that looked like it's misspelled but yeah search term is what we need to grab in order to do the query so let me make a note of this and we can do the query now actually and then build the page let's start by doing the same as always try catch for the catch i'm just gonna copy this bit here and now let's do first of all let's get the phrase so this is what we need to get so this time might be a little bit different so let search term be equals rec dot body we're going to use this time because it's coming from a form and then we're going to put search term. that's how we get the search term. now if you wanted to do the query it's actually fairly simple we're going to do let recipe equals await and then we're gonna do recipe the recipe object then find and then we want to find now this is a little bit tricky here uh we can't just search in mongodb that easily we're gonna have to do some magic here so bear with me i'm gonna do some crazy stuff in here let's do text and then we're gonna have another filter in here which is gonna be search and then search term and then uh we're gonna put the diacritic sensitivity to true so diacritic sensitivity true okay bear with me here uh otherwise uh, we can't just do a normal query like this we need to do it this way and also we need to go back to the models recipe model in particular and we need to say in which fields do we want to search from so if you go to back to mongodb as you can see there is a lot of fields in here so we can't just well we could just put a wildcard and search in all of them but uh in this example i want to show you how we can search maybe 
uh, keywords from the name and let's say the description maybe. So let's do that. In order to do that, we need to index them. So we're going to have to go back to the recipe model and inside here, we're going to have to use the schema that we created recipe schema and do a little index. So the index and then inside here, we can pass the fields that we want to index, which are name. And we need to just put this as uh, sorry text like so. And we need to pass the description in this case. So description, and then we put this as text. Okie dokie. That's it. Hopefully that should work. And one, one more thing, if you want to do the wildcard, I haven't tested it yet, but you could do potentially wildcard indexing. You could potentially do the same thing, recipe.index. But instead, you could do, I think it's going to be a dollar sign, sorry, in double quotes, dollar sign, asterisk, asterisk, and then it's going to be text. I haven't tried this yet, uh, but I think this is how it's going to work. I'm going to leave it here for you to try if you wish. And that's it. So let's have a look whether this is going to work. Uh, what we can do, just for a quick example, instead of rendering things, let's just do res.json and we're going to render the recipe just to see what we get. Okay. So if I, okay, so if I refresh, maybe we want to get salad. Let's put salad. And if I search, you will see that we're getting only one result. Uh, and it's the Thai chicken inspired French salad. Okay, this seems to be working. So we can definitely render that now. To do this, let's do what we always do. Uh, do I not have rest render? Oh, here it is. Okay, we need to move this inside here. So rest.render search, title, do whatever you like. And we just pass the recipe uh, in here with a dot recipe. All right, I'm gonna render this. Uh, all right, we can render this. We can go to the search page and build one super quickly now. So I'm going to go here and let's start with an H1. You know what? I think we can copy most of it from the home page. Let's have a look. So maybe we can copy this. I think that we can do. Um, yeah, let's copy this from the home page and let's just do it in here. So we'll change everything. So this needs to have a class name of Padding bottom to be four search result and then inside here that's absolutely fine we just need to change this to recipe and obviously we need to change the for each loop which is fine that's fine now i think that should be okay okay if we refresh you see that we're getting uh, the recipes nicely displayed and if i was to click on one uh, we're getting the recipes which is good let me search for one more. What else do we have? Curry. Let's search for curry. We're getting only two curries here. Thai red chicken soup and Thai green curry. So if I click on one, we're getting everything working. And now I think we're almost getting there. Submit recipe. And I think now we're almost getting there. I think I can show you how to... I've already kind of showed you how to do the latest query this but uh, if you wish we can do it all right let's do the explore latest show random and then we can do the form at the end so to do the explore latest i've done this link as explore dash latest so we're gonna have to do this uh what is it called route here we go so this is gonna be a get route so i'm gonna copy one of them and i'm gonna put it here so this is gonna be explore latest And maybe we can just do explore latest like so and put them all together. Obviously we need the page as well. So let's do, we could duplicate the search maybe. Let's do explore latest dot EGS. Explore latest. Oh, we've got so many open now. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's close everything. Uh, we're going to need this anyway. So explore latest is get. We're going to need to, let's grab this one. So we're going to do explore latest. Uh, this is going to be get. Explore latest. Pro 
for latest and for the query i'm going to do this from scratch so maybe we do the same as the other ones we just do const uh, limit number and we put that limit number to be 20 or whatever and then we can do const recipe it equals a wait and then we get the recipe dot find inside here we don't put anything as we just want the latest and i've done that earlier actually we're going to do just sort and if you wanted to sort it out by latest inside here we just put underscore id and then minus one that should do the job then we can put the limit if you wish limit no sorry limit and then inside here we put the limit number like so we're already passing this object so i could potentially just go to was it the search that we just done and grab this i think actually i'm gonna grab everything just paste in here change that now and hopefully that should be it so if i was to refresh explore latest and we're getting recipe ingredients for each oh um we changed the controller but we didn't change the rendering page we need to change this to explore latest and that's it i think that would be it cool let's have a look fresh and if we click on explore latest we're getting the latest products in here and that's it i'm gonna leave this one as done so i'm gonna click on this and it's working all right let's now do the show random and i'm actually just going to show you how to do it but you can figure out how to how you want to display i'm just going to show you the query and maybe we can just display the data uh so just to speed up the process and so the button was called so random dash recipe okay so we need to create that if you go to the route then inside here we can do random recipe i mean ideally i want it to be the same explore random so i'm gonna go back to is it the home page i think it is and just change it to explore random just so it's the same and when we hit that url we want to explore random recipe okay let's do the uh, controller and i'm not going to do the page as you already know how to display that all right let's do it in here so i'm gonna grab all this and i'm gonna put that in here explore explore random as jason. as jason so i'm gonna remove this i'm gonna remove this as well okay let's start from the beginning so if we hit that url i just want to show a random recipe to do this we are first going to need to count the actual uh, document how many documents do we have so to do this let's do let dot count sorry let's count equals await recipe dot find and then we need to find the count of the document and now we can use this to uh, make a random number out of it so let random equals math dot floor and then inside here we can do math dot random and then we can do times the count that we're getting from here and we close and the last thing that we need to do is query so let recipe i'm going to use the same name object here actually it doesn't really matter that much recipe as i'm going to display as json and then await and then we can do recipe dot find one this time just one we need to find and then we can skip to the random number that we just generated and execute this like so and i'm going to display this as json to speed up the process as you already know how to render stuff json and we put the recipe i mean i could do a different page for it i could do it okay right, let's do that let's see if it works first of all okay refreshed if i put show random as you can see we have crab cakes if i refresh we have another product another product so it's all random um if you wanted to display this to be completely honest we're gonna have to create a new page to do that and i'm just thinking can we just use the 
explore latest. I'm just going to do it like that. I mean, you can display it however you want, but let's do it. I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to create another page and I'm going to do, call it explore. Explore and .js. Uh, that's fine. Explore random. Now we just need to render this page. So we're going to go back to the controller and instead of rest.json, we just need to rest.render and then random. Hopefully this should display a random recipe. And no, it's not. Recipe for each recipe. Yeah, we can't use for each in this uh, situation because we only have one result. I don't think that we can use for each in here. So that's a, maybe that was a good exercise. So let's have a look. If I refresh, here it is. And I probably wouldn't display it like this. I'll probably display the whole information somehow. But here it is. It's a random one. And if I refresh, uh, another random one appears. I don't want to uh, waste too much time on this because you can start it the way you like. And that's it. So this is the random one. And now finally, we can maybe concentrate on doing the actual submit form for the recipes. All right, this is going to be a big one doing the form. So let's get going. So where is the form? Submit button. So we have submit recipe and we have submit recipe links. So we need to create this page first of all. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do another router here. It's going to be submit recipe. And the controller for this one is going to be submit. Submit recipe and that's going to be submit recipe. So now we need to create this submit recipe page and let's do it in here. Rejs and then H1. Submit. Okay, we'll come back to this. So now that we have the route here, that's cool. Let's create the actual. And by the way, this is going to be get just to say this is going to be okay. Let's go to the controller. So let's do it in here. Let's just make sure that uh, we just rendered the page for now. So what I'm going to do is grab this. Now I'm going to grab all this just to like a simple render. So let's copy this render here and we're going to render submit recipe. Submit recipe. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do is remove this and maybe do submit recipe like so. That's it. And I need to change the controller. This. Cool. All right. Hopefully the page should be working now. So if I go back, refresh, submit recipe, we have the submit page and now we can start building our form. This is going to be a big one. So, okay. Hopefully it won't take too long. Let's go into it. Let's close everything else that we don't need. And let's just concentrate on this. First of all, let's do a little bit of a title for this one. Uh, so let's do a div of class of px for py5 my5 text center. So many classes. Uh, h1 class display dash five and then bold. And this is going to be submit your recipe. Uh, inside here, we're going to have another div with the class of co large six MX auto. And inside here, we're going to have a text. So this is going to be with the class name of lead. And I'm going to copy some text, copy, paste, and that's it. So this is all nice. Now it's the form. Okay. For the form, let's create a div with the class name of row and justify content center. Inside here, I'm going to have a column of eight. And then inside here, we're going to have the form. So basically I've made the form slightly smaller than 12 columns and I want it to be in the middle and then we can start creating the form in here. So 
There are a couple of important things to know about. So first of all, form action. This is going to be submitting on the same page. So submit, submit recipe. Uh, one important thing that we need to make sure that we put is the NC, e -N -C type to be equals multi part from data. And this is because we're going to be submitting an image as well. And very important, the method needs to be set to post. Okay. Now that we have the form, we can start uh, adding some fields. Hopefully once we do one, we're going to be able to duplicate them and speed up the process. So let's create a row first of all. So div with a class name of row and gap free if that works. And then inside here, I'm going to create a div class of call 12. And inside here, I'm going to start adding the first input. So the label for this one is going to be for email. The class is going to be form label. And this is going to be email. Let's create an input. The input will be the type of email. The name will be email. The ID is an email. Cool. So what's important here is the name. We're going to be grabbing the input information using this name here. So you can name it whatever you like, but you need to remember that. And then we can do the same for the rest. So I'm going to do a name and then recipe name. And then I'm just going to put name everywhere, except this type needs to be text. And we're done. The next one would be the description. So let's add that. Description type of text, absolutely fine. Actually, the description needs to be text area. Um, Okay, text area, name, description, ID, description, calls, 30 rows, let's go for four and remove this because we're going to be adding a bit more for the description. That's why. Now let's copy this for the next one, which is the ingredients. And then for this, maybe we can do a little example, BR, and we can do small example. I don't know, ice to, I don't know, let's just put ice, ice. Then we're going to have the input, which will be called ingredient with small i. It's going to have the ID of ingredients. Actually, we're going to remove this because I'm going to show you something in a second. Um, what we want to do for the ingredients, we actually want to be able to duplicate this input uh, so we can add more ingredients such as sugar, uh, water, uh, eggs, whatever, you know. So we want to be able to duplicate this. We might have to do some a little bit more work on this, but let me add a button. It's going to be an ugly one, but who cares for now? Diff class of call 12 for the button. And then let's do a bootstrap button. So button, and we're going to do type of button. Then we're going to do class name of BTN, BTN outline, and then primary. And then we might have to add an ID for this, just so when we press it, we can duplicate this here. And we're going to have to do this on the front end with JavaScript. So let's call this one add ingredients ptn and I'm going to put plus ingredient ingredient one. Okay. All right. We might have to wrap this in a diff so we can easily grab it and duplicate it. So what I'm going to do is let's put a diff here with the class name of ingredient list. Okay. Let's wrap everything in here and I'm going to put one more div with the class name of ingredient div. And maybe when we add ingredients, we might want to have, well, we duplicate this, sorry, we, want, we might want to have margin bottom a little bit. So I'll put one. The next bit that we're going to do is the categories. So let's create another column here. So div with the class name of code dash 12. Uh, this one is going to be different. This one is going to be a select menu. 
So let's do a label for category. Category. And then we can do a select. And then we can do a class. Form. Select. Form control. The name is going to be category. Area label is going to be category. Like so. Then inside the select, obviously, we're going to have to put some options. This one is going to be the selected one, and I'm just going to put select category. And then let's put some uh, options. So this one is going to be with the value of uh, tie. If you remember when we did our recipe here, uh, we put this as enum, which means that we can only have those categories here. If you try to insert anything else rather than them, uh, it's not going to work. It's going to say uh, an error. It's going to give you an error. So just have that in mind. And that's why uh, we've put it in here. Otherwise, this could be hacked. Uh, I can always change this with HTML, but we have the enum set in here. So technically we can hack it. So even if you change the HTML, you won't be able to submit this, what I'm saying. And then we're going to have tie, and then we're going to have how many more? One, two, one, two, three, four, I think. So this one is going to be American. This one is going to be Chinese. This one is going to be Mexican. And this one is going to be Indian. Cool. That's then for the options. Uh, what else do we have? We have select image. This is going to be slightly different as well. So let's create a, another div with a class of call dash 12. And this is going to be a label for image. Product image, and then this is going to be an input, but slightly different input. This is going to be a type of file, and this one is going to have the class of form control, and it's going to have the name of image, and we're going to ha have accept. And here we can put what we want to accept. I'm going to say I want to accept all images, but you can specify whether you want to accept on the uh, JPEGs or PNGs or whatever. So I'm going to say accept all. And last, we're going to create a button. So div with a class of call 12. And I'm going to do a button with the type of submit. And then this is going to have the class of BTN, BTN primary. And I'm going to say submit recipe. Like so. Let me just double check something. Text area. I didn't add the class to text area. This is what I wanted to check. So class, it's going to be form control, I think. Cool. That's it. So we have pretty much everything that we need here. Uh, let me have a look. All right. So if I refresh, we have some things are not working. I think I've missed the classes maybe on them. Uh, so let me have a look super quickly. Sorry about that. It's probably the form control class. So if I go to the top input, yeah, okay. Class form control, class form control, and then the rest should be okay. Yeah, everything is looking good. The form is looking good. So if we go to submit, we have submit your recipe and we have all of these things. Now, uh, the ingredients doesn't seem to be working. So ingredients, ingredients, ingredients. It's going to be this one here. Form control. And that's it. Before we do anything, we might have to wire this up. We're going to have to do some JavaScript in order to be able to copy this so we can add more like sugar, ice, whatever. And yeah, let's do that. So first of all, we're going to have to go to our main layout and have a look at whether we have a custom JS file, which we don't. So if I do view web, I'm going to put a custom JavaScript in here. So I'm going to do a script with the source and the source will be slash um, 
JS, which is going to be your public folder. And inside here, I'm going to put a script. So this is going to be script.js. And I'm going to try this straight away. So I'm going to create this script. JS and let's save this. And one thing I can do, oops, one thing I can do is just do an alert. Now this is a front end JavaScript, by the way. Hello world. Let's save this. If I refresh, we're getting hello world. So the JavaScript works, which is great. I can remove this. And now I want to be able to copy this input using the class of this and this and i want to copy it on the press of this button here with the id of add ingredient button so this is going to be an interesting one uh, i'm pretty sure that it's so easy to do with the other frameworks but uh, with pure javascript it's a little bit of a hell to do so let's do it so first of all we need to select the button the button was called add ingredient bdn It's here, uh, add ingredients BTN. I can even copy if you wish, don't need that. So add ingredients BTN is equals uh, document dot get element by ID. And the ID is add ingredient button. And now I need to grab the ingredient list. So this is gonna be add ingredient, this one here, sorry, ingredient list. So let's do let ingredient list is equals document dot Query selector because this is a what is it called a class name. Uh, I'm gonna have to do it with a query selector. Now I'm gonna have to grab the div is well in here. So let's do let uh, ingredient div equals document. I wish Bootstrap had this option, but probably does. I just don't know about it. Uh, so document query selector all, and I'm gonna grab the first ingredient div object by doing this it's gonna make sense in a second so what i have to do now is do the on click embed listener and i can do it on this button so if we do add ingredient button and then add event listener this is gonna be a click uh, this is gonna function and then inside here we're gonna do some magic First of all, we need to clone this ingredient dip. So to do this, let's do let new ingredients equals ingredient div dot clone. Clone node is the one I need. And then that should be set to true. And then we need uh, to grab the input. And the reason I'm grabbing the input is just, just in case if there was a value in the input and you decided to add uh, more values, you don't want to copy what's inside the input. So I'm going to do let input equals new ingredients dot get element by, sorry, this one is going to be get element by tag name. And I want to get the input. And I want to get the first one. Right. Now I want to reset this value. So input dot value is equals nothing. And then lastly, I want to append this to the ingredient list. So I can do ingredient list dot append child. And I want to append the new ingredient. It's a little bit confusing. This one is, uh, but hopefully it will work. So if I was to go to the form, refresh, and if I click add, we are adding more ingredients, which is what we want. I'm not going to do the reverse now. Uh, it's taking far too long. And now let's have a look at how we can actually submit the information and upload an image and get some uh, flash messages. Actually, that might be the next thing to do. Let's set up the flash messages just because uh, it's, it would be easier to set them first and then work with them later. All right, for the flash messages, we're going to have to go back to app.js and we're going to have to insert the rest of the dependencies that we installed earlier in this tutorial. If you haven't yet installed them, don't worry, you can just uh, install them now. It's not a problem, but I'm going to require them here and then we're going to make it work. So it's going to be quite a few of them. Let's we might as well put the file uploader. So let's do const file upload and this will be equals require. And we're going to require the express file upload like so. And then we're going to need the session. So const equals require. And we are requiring the express uh, sessions. 
express session, sorry. And then we need the cookie parser, so const cookie parser equals require. And then we have the cookie parser, like so. And we also want the flash messages, so const flash equals require, and then connect flash. I can't believe how much, uh, how many dependencies we need to add to make the connect flash work. Uh, I'm not sure whether there is an easier way for this, but I've already made a specific tutorial on this as well if you want to check it out. But I'll explain as much as I can here. And now we need to set a few things up. Under here, I'm going to put some more middleware, of course. So we're going to do app.use and we're going to do cookie parser. And this is going to accept, uh, first of all, we need to put something secure here. So cooking box secure, very secure. Uh, close this. And then we need to do app.use. And then we need to put uh, session. And inside here, we can pass a free options. Uh, actually, the first one is secret. And we just need to put something secret. So let's put... Secret session uh, and save initialize. We need to put as true. And the last thing that we need to put is uh, resave. We need to put as true as well. And we also need to do app.use flash like so. And file uploader app.use file uploader. I'll upload. Okay, that's it. I think that's it. That's all we need. Let me close this. Save. And now we should be able to use the flash messages and the file uploader. First of all, let me create the submit page. So uh, the submit route, sorry. So if we go, I'm going to remove this now. I'm going to remove this now. And if we go to the, let me see, server route route okay we need another route for posting the data so this is get but we need one more to post so i'm gonna do router post we're posting on the same page submit recipe but we do need to change the controller so submit recipe i don't like how both okay maybe we can do on on post i think that's descriptive enough and now we need to create this so we're going to go to controllers and just underneath here is where I'm going to create it. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to start with post, submit recipe, submit recipe. Yeah, that's correct. I'm going to change the export here to submit recipe on post. We do not want to render here because this is on post. We probably want to uh, redirect instead. Redirect and we can't pass anything else in here now. That's why we're going to use the flash messages. And that's it. I think this should do the job. Save everything. We can remove this. Remove this. And let me try to post something. OK, so I'm refreshing. It's all good. I click post and we're getting submit recipe. Cannot post. OK. Uh, redirect. Actually, I need to put the page. I need to put a slash here. So that's probably the reason, I hope. So if I refresh, uh, and for some reason, this doesn't seem to be working now, uh, which is very strange. And I believe that I've made a little mistake here. And is this file upload needs to be like that. Hopefully this will fix it. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. A tiny little mistake, but it breaks the whole application. So if I was to go back to submit recipe and we submit, as you can see, it refreshed and nothing happened. So the submit is now uh, working. That's all we need. We just need to press redirect. And now we can actually start looking into the flash messages, uh, which I think is probably best to set up now. So let me show you how they work. For example, we usually pass objects in here. And if they are not undefined, bad things happen. We need to check and all that. But OK. So let me show you how we can do the flash messages. So I'm going to try to explain as much as I can here. I have made videos on this before, but let me show you. So first of all, I'm going to set an object. So maybe we can call it info error subject. 
info info arrays object like so and this is going to hold all the errors that we want to display to the user so where we can do uh, and to use flash messages we can do rec dot flash and then we can give it a name so info errors is what i want so this is going to be for the errors but i want one more for the success messages and this could be info submit submit object and this could be rect or flash and then info maybe submit and and in order to be able to pass this to the actual page we're gonna have to just pass them one by one here so we can do info errors object and info submit object just like so now obviously they are empty at the moment but what we can do for now is if we submit something maybe we can try the info submit the successful message and to do this to be to be able to use the flash message what we have to do is inside here on post so we're gonna go here and we're gonna do rec dot flash message uh like this like rec dot flash and then we're gonna put the message that we want to flash so this is gonna be the info submit message and then in here we can pass whatever we like an object or even a string so i'm going to write something quickly recipe has been added like so and i'm gonna leave it obviously we're gonna use the other one as well when we have an error so let me show you how we can do this first of all if we go to bootstrap and if we go to messages maybe alert I want one of them basically so I want this one and this one here so this is the success I want I'm gonna grab that I'm gonna pull that on the page here at the top maybe maybe around oops maybe around here in the middle so this is gonna be the success message and what we can do is check for that so as we are passing this info submit object I can grab it and I can do with EJS, I can do if info submit object is not equals empty, then we need to open like so and close EJS in here. So if this is empty, we're not going to display anything. And to prove that this is working, hopefully we can go back, refresh and nothing is happening. We don't have anything. But if I was to submit something, and actually I want to get the object name. So we might as well do that now. So I'm gonna do uh, dash info submit object. And I think that's it. So we hopefully we should be able to get recipe has been added. Let's have a look. I'm gonna go back, refresh and then submit. As you can see, recipe has been added. I definitely want it inside here. So let's fix that. Uh, maybe maybe I can just do it inside here and I can do as a call eight so let's do alert actually let's just do call eight I think that would fix it make it nice okay and now if we go back refresh it's gone if I submit its recipe has been added and now let's have a look at how we can wire the form and how we can display some errors and that will be the last bit of the tutorial so first of all let's do it with dummy data i always try to do it with dummy data first of all and on submit so this is on submit so this is where we're gonna be doing the submission and let's do the usual so we're gonna do try catch try catch and if we are successful we want to say yes we've added something with the flash message but if it's not then we can we can flash the error so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this and i'm going to do rect of flash grab the error one and we can pass the error object in here like so and that's it we can also redirect as well to the same page and that should work and now let's try to submit some data to the database finally and to do this, to add a new document, we can do const. Maybe we can do new recipe. And this will be equals new recipe, which is our model here at the top. So I'm going to grab that. I don't need to do that, but I just wanted to show you. So I'm going to grab that new recipe. And then inside here is where we add the data. 
So what I'm going to do now, let me close this. What I'm going to do now is add a bunch of data. So if you remember our model, we have a name, description, email, ingredients, category, image, all of them are required. And let's do that. So first of all, let's start with name and I'm going to add some dummy stuff. New chocolate cake. Then let's do description. And then we're going to do Then we can do email. For the email, we're going to do hellorally.co.uk. For the ingredient, we're going to do uh, water. And for the uh, image, not for the category. If you remember, the only categories that we can use from the enum here are Thai, American, Chinese, Mexican and Indian. So I'm going to do Mexican and then let's do image and the image. I'm just going to pass an image that is already in the uploads folder. Let's have a look if we have any, do I have any? Okay. I'm going to grab this one here. So let's grab the name. So it's not empty really. That's all. And that's it. Now that we have created this, if we wanted to save it, we can do a wait await new recipe that we just created above and then we can just do dot save like so and that should save to the database um obviously this is dummy data so on submit it's gonna save if it fails it's gonna go here and it's gonna display an error we have to do the same thing for the error here so we're gonna have to do the same thing but it's gonna be info uh where is it sorry info error object so info error object, info error object, and this is going to be a danger thing. And that would be it. And I think we might have to go inside the this object, but I'll show you why in a second. So hopefully if we go to the main page of the website, this is the latest product here. So if we submit a new one, let's have a look. Oopsie, let me, let me submit a new one. So obviously this is not working just yet. We're submitting the data that we just hard coded. So submit a recipe has been submitted. If I was to refresh, we have the new chocolate cake here. I click on it and it's all good. Basically all the information that we just added. So that's working. It's also, if we refresh in the database, we'll see it somewhere at the bottom, I believe. Uh, here it is, new chocolate cake. Cool. Now, if we did uh, have an error, uh, let's say we didn't fill all of the, uh, all of them are required by the way. So if we didn't fill one of them, it should technically error. So I'm going to remove the name. And if we refresh now and submit, you will see object object. And the reason for this is, is because this is uh, giving us like a, an error object, which we can play with here. So what I'm going to do just to show you rec dot json i'm going to display as json and i'm going to put this inside the json here and display so this is going to make a lot of sense in a second so i'm going to submit oh it's not res it's re uh, sorry it's not rec it's res json i thought straight away okay here it is so i submit uh errors name name and message this field is required so it's uh, realized that this name uh this field is required and now potentially we could use this to display it. Oopsie, it's so zoomed in to uh, display in our form here. Uh, but the laziest way and probably not the so good way, the laziest way is to literally just grab this message for now. But you can play around by uh, grabbing each individual error if you wish. I mean, I can try, but let me show you with the message. So if I was to obviously we need to remove this. And if I was to go back and inside here put message, hopefully it should display the message. Um, did I remove the res JSON? I think I did. Okay, refresh. Did I not save it? Uh, save. Okay, I didn't save probably. 
save this refresh and it's not working i think i think it's because we need to go inside the object my fault so we need to go to the first one so okay okay recipe validation field name this field is required so this is the laziest way and if, if we haven't submitted the, the rest obviously it's gonna display the rest and uh, basically that's how we can play with the validation obviously this is coming from the back end which is good it can't be disabled while if we do it with uh, javascript on the front end it's nice with the user experience but it can be disabled and i just wanted to show you uh in forms you can get uh somewhere in forms validation if you wanted to uh, do that I, I think it would be nice to do that but it's just gonna take too much time now uh, you need to basically uh, follow this form you can maybe copy it uh, I think on the form you need to include needs validation um, what else do you need obviously you need the, the valid feedback stuff I'm probably gonna miss something I definitely need the JavaScript and you're gonna probably input this JavaScript on the front end javascript in public if you remember public uh, js this is where you would include it and yeah just mess around uh, the other way you can do it for example maybe we can do for the name i can just put request and the browser will handle this so if i go back and if i submit look at this uh this field this field is required and it won't let me submit which is really good i can do the same for the rest now one last thing that we need to do is submit the data from the form which you probably uh, already know how to do that by this point we can just replace all this uh, so name okay so let's replace all of this with real data i'm gonna leave the image for last because we need to do something with that as well i totally forgot um okay so for this basically to get the data from the form we're just gonna do rec dot uh, body and then name name is the name of the actual field so if you go back and have a look at this this is what it is this is the name from the field then we have description here we have ingredients and so on so that's why we're doing that make sure you put comma and i'm just going to copy this now and just you know what i'm going to paste it everywhere and hopefully change it okay we don't want the name everywhere so i'm going to put description here email here ingredients here category here and for the image let's leave it for last uh, everything else is looking cool so hopefully if we refresh this and input something so hello ready new recipe from form and uh, then we can just do description we need some ice we need some water and we need some sugar okay category let's put it as thai uh, image we're not going to do now submit recipe has been added if we go back to the front page you will see new recipe from form that we just added obviously it's using the same image i added ice water and sugar uh all looking good and now let's quickly build a form because it's quickly build the form now uh, sorry the upload the upload image i'm going to quickly build that now as well uh i do have a detailed video on this but let's just build it inside here super quickly it's not going to be reusable or anything like that let uh, image upload file and this is actually from the official uh, documentation on the express file uploader and let me close all this close all this okay so let image upload file let upload path we're gonna put the path as well let new image name and now we're gonna check so if rec dot files or object dot keys rec dot files uh it'll make sense in a second and then we need to check for the length six equals zero then this is gonna fail it's gonna say that no files were uploaded so we can maybe console log something log and we can just say no no files were uploaded else oops let's close this and else we can do 
we need to get the name of the input. So image uh, upload file is going to be equals rec.files. And then this is going to be equals image, I think. I can't remember what is image now. Uh, excuse me. Submit. And uh, it's image. Yeah. Okay. So image, close this. And then we're going to do new image name is equals. We're going to get the date now because I want to have a unique name for every, every single image that we upload. And then we're going to do plus image upload file dot name. And then we just need to set the directory upload path is equals require. And then we require the path and to resolve to the main directory and go into the public uploads, we're going to have to do dot resolve. And then we're going to do plus slash public and then slash uploads and then slash plus the new image name that we just created. And the last thing that we need to do is write the file. So image upload file dot mv upload to the upload path that we just put. And this is going to be a function and this is going to have an error. And if we do have an error, we can just check if error and then return, actually return res.status and then 500 dot send error. Okay. So what we have to do now is replace this with the new image name. Uh, so yeah, we need to replace this with the image name, which comes from above. And I think hopefully if we are lucky, we should be able to upload an image and a recipe at the same time. All right. So let's start. Hello. Uh, new recipe with image. Sugar. Uh, we can add more sugar, sugar, then Chinese, then we upload an image. I'm going to upload my logo here, submit. Recipe has been submitted. If we go back, uh, you will see that my logo is in here. And if I click on it, it's displayed and it's all looking nice. And that's pretty much it from this tutorial. I know that there is a lot more to do, uh, but I think this is pretty cool so far. All right, and the last thing that I wanted to show you just as an add-on to this tutorial is how to actually update the record and how to delete one. We're not going to do any forms or anything like that. I'm just going to show you the query. By now, you should be able to pass data, create forms, uh, read data, yeah, and push data to the database. So let's have a look at a very simple query of updating a specific recipe. For example, let's grab this one here. So what I'm going to do is let's go back and let's open the server controllers and recipe controller and anywhere really. I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to do anything special. I'm just going to do the query. And when we uh, refresh the website, I just wanted to run. That's all. And so you can have it here and then I'll comment it out. So to update a specific recipe should be fairly easy to do. First of all, I'm going to wrap everything into an asynchronous function. So let's start by typing that in here, async, and this is going to be a function. And let's call this function update recipe, like so. And inside here, we're going to wrap everything into a try catch, just like we've done everywhere, pretty much. And for the try, we're going to say const. Uh, response equals await and this is where we do our query and the query will be recipe or recipe because we want to update a recipe and we can just do the update one there is as you can see there is update many as well but we're just going to do one in this case and let's say that we wanted to update this recipe here with the name of new recipe so i'm going to grab the name so let's put name put the name inside here so we can update it. And then if you wanted to update this to something else, we can do comma and inside here we can pass the new value, so name, and then maybe we can put a new recipe updated like so. 
Let's close this. Let me close this as well. We can't display the number of documents matched, so we could do the response and then N. And that is from the official documentation. This says this will be number of documents matched. And then we can do res.n modified. And this will display the number of documents modified. Okay, I'm not going to do anything else here. Uh, for the error, we could just console log something. Let's just console log the error. And that's it. So to run this function, let's just put it inside here and run it. Obviously, we don't, we're going to comment this in a second, so it doesn't run all the time. Otherwise, it's going to keep updating the recipe. All right, technically speaking, if I was to refresh now, you will see that we're getting new recipe updated and this is how easy it is to update a record. And the last thing that I want to show you, let me, I'm going to leave this for you just so you have the query here, but obviously this needs to be commented out. And the last one that I want to do, delete recipe. And this is going to be exactly the same. I'm just going to remove all this. So we're going to do const res. Uh, and in fact, we don't even need this. So let's remove this. So I'm going to do a wait recipe. And instead of update one, we're going to do delete one. As you saw, you can delete many as well. And the one that we want to delete is the new recipe updated. So I'm going to remove all this, remove all this. And so here it is. So wait recipe, delete one with the name of new recipe updated, delete recipe. We need to run this function this time and that should delete the recipe. So if I go to the front page, you will see that the recipe is now gone and maybe we can delete this one as well. So let me see new recipe from form. Let's delete this one as well. Save, refresh and it's gone. So that's how you delete recipes, update recipes, add recipes and that's pretty much it. I'm going to comment this out as well. So delete recipe and I'm going to put a comment for this one, which is update recipe. All right, I'm going to leave these here just so you can have the queries and I'm going to tidy up the data here. I'm going to leave this. But for this one, I'll probably won't leave all the data. I'll probably just leave one with some dummy data. And that's everything from this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. Please consider subscribing to my channel. It would help me a lot. And thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Radi, and you're watching my channel, Radi the Brand. And I will see you in the next tutorial.